Uh, Esmai, is it, from the Bronx? Yes. Yeah. Um, you're, you think there will be a, a conservative sort of democratic alliance on this? Yes, I'm thinking there will be. Uh, oh, turn your radio down. Wait, let me turn this down. Yeah, it's not too far away, I hope. Yeah. Good, go ahead. Okay, yes, I've actually been a, a uh, protester, and I've been active in my community. Uh, my name is uh, Esmai DNBs, and I've been active in my community, and I believe that eventually con compassionate conservatives and uh, let's call them liberals alike, because the, the new label progressive I don't think really fits, I think somehow will come together. Uh, my mother, personally, the reason that I became active was because my mother didn't have any children that lived, and therefore I call the Don and Mike show and say, where's your crop detector now, see? Uh... Uh -huh. That's very helpful. That's very helpful. Can we just, can we just, yeah, burping is not, is not, I mean, this is a tough issue, and we try to screen the calls and we, so that you know, total lunatics don't, uh, don't call. It's the Don and Mike show, and they'll say what they wish. Where else would you rather be than right here, right now? Oh, no. Here they come. Hey, them. The replacement show that Westwood One has ready for us. Come tomorrow. There they are with their headphones. It's not headphones. Okay, I get the format. I get it. A true story. He was a neo-Nazi with one true enemy. Himself. A man of faith. A man of hate. And a soul torn apart. Viewer discretion advised. I know all of them. Good afternoon, Mr. and Mrs. Charlie Harper. Charlie Harper. Charlie Harper. And all the ships at sea. Hey, they aren't Moe's. Don Geronimo and Mike Momera. Yeah. Wow. And Mike Momera. No, huh? Oh. Hey. Hey. Hey, hey. Hi, and thank you for listening, everybody. This is uh, the Don and Mike Show. A new episode on this Wednesday. Wednesday. September tenor. Right. And, well, we... We'll get into what, what today's show is about in a second. Let me just say right here, uh, you love him. It's Felicia Elston. Hi, Felicia. Hi, Dom and Mike. Buzz Burbank here. She's lovely. Is anyone missing? Hey, what happened? Shut up. Did you wash the ass today? Someone call for a doctor? So the uh, the phone number is uh, the same as it's always been uh, since we changed it. 877-365-3636. I like that. That's the phone number. And uh, it's 1067-WJFK, Washington. Is that the number? What's that? What? That's the phone number? 877-365-3636. Oh, okay. 1067-Dial Position, Washington. Ah. 1057 dial position Baltimore, 95.9er dial position Ocean City. I think one of those might be wrong. Nope, I'm positive. Okay. We've right. checked. Although today, maybe the last day that it's relevant. Uh, let's just let's just get this out of the way and, and move on with the show. Right. Um, today, as far as we can guess, will, will be maybe the last network show that we do. Yeah, we're not sure, uh, but... Nothing is indicating anything other than this might be the last one. And uh, there's been lots of posturing and lots of talking and lots of rhetoric. And, and a couple of days ago, we tried to get our position across. And and there's so much stuff that we could say, but we can't say. And it's not one of those deals where it's like, if we, if we say this, we're going to get in trouble. Uh, our options are actually quite limited hmm. as, as to what what we can and cannot do. Right. Due to a fabulous contract we signed 13 years ago. Duh. Uh, so there's a... There's stuff going on behind the scenes, and I think that, that this this will be our last day on the network, uh, at least until something is, is, is worked out, if in fact something is worked out. Right. So rather than uh, take this time to, to yell and scream at, at, at the jerk faces at uh, Westwood One, I would just like to just uh, briefly thank... Uh, all of the listeners in our in our cities. Yeah, we've had uh, many many success stories around the country, and uh, yeah. we've got great listeners all over the place. We've been out to see lots of you, and uh, it's been great. It was and, fun. And, and not only uh, the listeners who are the most important people. Who and we and we realize. Listen, if this show goes away or tomorrow it's it's a rerun for, for, on the network, and then we we don't ever come back. We're sorry. We'd like it to be different. We really would like it to be different, but there are just so many effed up circumstances behind the scenes that you're tired of hearing about, and we're tired of talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's uh, it's something where we'd love it to get worked out, but if it doesn't, 
you know, you get you get to a point where you just have to, you know, make some tough decisions. So not only would we like to thank uh, all of the uh, the radio stations, uh, also the uh, the listeners, uh, the poor schmucks, the board operators mm. that have had to sit there for the last however many months, or, or in some cases years, this show has uh, has been run. Uh, in particular, uh, Baltimore. Even if things go awry, we hope to, to somehow resurface in Baltimore mm -hmm. on Live 105. Uh, let me see. A longtime affiliate is uh, WHTK in Rochester. That's a 10-year affiliate. Mm -hmm. uh, KVOL 105.9 in Lafayette, Louisiana. We've been there. That's that's a 10-year affiliate. Wow. KFH in Wichita. KFH FM and AM. That's a 10-year affiliate. We've been there. Uh, let me see. Burlington, Iowa. That's a 9-year affiliate. KCPS. Uh Jeez, let me go on down the list. I'm just trying to find the the ones that have been with us the longest. Yeah. We got a lot. We got a lot of 1999s and a lot of 2001s. Mm -hmm. And well, this is part of the whole problem with the show. <laughs> that I see only two new stations in calendar year 2003. There you are. Um, would that be Buffalo? Buffalo and uh, Salt Lake City. Interesting. That would be uh, that would be it. Um, anyway. You know, you guys are, are really great, and I know we bust balls all the time, but that's what we do. You know, it's, it's a show. Right. Uh, we're very sad that it's worked out this way. And trust me, if there was another way, we could do it. But if you were in our position, and you had to look yourself in the mirror every morning and know that you were just working for a company that looked at your syndicated show as a tax write-off and had no no thought of ever moving it to a to a slightly higher level than the shoebox level it's already on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, never say die. I mean, I uh, no matter what happens, I would like to think that, uh, you know, if it wasn't going to be on this network, that, that somehow, some way, we could build up, uh, you know, a network somewhere down the road on our own. I really think that, that we could do that. But, again, part of the, um, the unfortunate part of that is that, one of the many clauses of our highly overwritten contract yeah, says... We, we do it with them or we don't do it with anybody. We have and to do it with Infinity Broadcasting, and uh, of course Westwood One is... Unless, by, of course, they... Which won't happen. You know, if they were nice guys about it. But but who knows? You know, I don't like to predict the future, but you do prepare for the, sure. the situation, and that's what we're doing right now. And and really, the, way, the, the, the reason we're, we're saying this now on the radio, and I promise we're going to move on, is by way of warning the, the stations. And I know a lot of you stations out there that run the show, the management, you think we don't care about you, and, and well, some of you we don't, to be honest. <laughs> uh, but some of you... You know, you're okay, guys. You you promoted the show. The show's gotten some ratings for you. We've had some some mutual successes. And and I feel bad for now. I'm talking just behind the scenes stuff. I don't want the radio stations that carry the show across America to be caught with their pants down tomorrow. Right. Uh, and it's not that Mike and I are planning any kind of gigantic nuclear attack tomorrow. No, we're not going to no do that. That's, that's not what this is about. Meltdown. I mean... It's just it's it's behind the scenes stuff that probably will necessitate Westwood One either just coming to us and saying, okay, let's work this out, or say, let's go our separate ways, or say, which is the popular choice right now, nothing. We need more time right. or nothing. Yes. And and then just run a run a dust up because it's, you know, it's just, it, it eats us up here. I, I mean, mm -hmm. you just can't, you can't know what it's like because it goes on to 20 hours a day that we're not here. And I think we're the uh we're the you know the people that realize what it could be and that's the greatest frustration. And I mean, and it doesn't need to be this way. And trust me, I know that when you get in your car, I mean listen, it's fun to hear us yell at Alan, jerk face Alan. But I I know that over time and especially over the last 2 years, ugh, we spent a lot of time bitching about Westwood One and saying if they don't do this, we're going to do this. And if they don't do this, we're going to do this. And, and after a while, I understand it becomes rhetoric. And it even becomes rhetoric to us. Mm -hmm. We're saying, why are we wasting time on this? Mm -hmm. And the option is, we let it go the way that it goes. And really, we can't have any respect for what we do. Right. Or respect for you guys. Or respect for any of the radio stations that we're on. If the relationship continues down the current road that it's on. Right. So this is just all about feeling good and coming in. And trust me, we realize you listen to this show to get away from the crap in the world. And I think there's a certain amount of crap in, the, in our world that you'll tolerate. Mm -hmm. That you'll tolerate the crap with our crappy lives. And you'll tolerate the crap with the everyday crap that goes on here at, the, at this radio station. Mm -hmm. But there's a limit to how much you'll take 
when we're bitching about a giant conglomerate that that we uh, we're we're genitally tied to. I mean, our genitals really are tied in. On well, that was part of the contract. Is that they? Uh, it, well, it's done with wire, a series of pulleys and oh. wires uh, attached to our genitals. Oh. So anyway. Yeah, uh, you know, I've always thought about this, how we do this. We, we, Mike and I, eventually, five years, seven years, whatever it is, we'll do our last show together. Mm -hmm. But it won't be like this, because it, it'll be a happy time. This is a sad time for us, mm -hmm. and we're sorry that it's ended this way. Uh, we've made no unreasonable demands of our parent company. No, we we really are just trying to get people to pay attention. Right? And, and it's it's not... It's not really working for us. And I'll just give you one glimpse inside this, and then we'll move past it. I think they're paying attention now. It's just a question of, you know, whether we're going to get any answers. Right. One of our one of our bones of contention is, uh, you know, hey, listen, let's be honest. Money makes the world go around. Now, this is a business. We're in it for the business. Everybody's in it for the business. Mm -hmm. uh, we estimate for anywhere from the last 13 to last 7 to last 5 years that we've just been getting gypped out of some money now not a huge amount of money but we think we've been getting jibbed out of some money and we have a, a couple of options uh one option would be to sue westwood one mm -hmm. we can't we can't do that because westwood one is infinity broadcasting which is viacom yeah, we're not going to do that you know and 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 the other option would be to just get in a the... weird twisted way we do have we do have some loyalty to this company <laughs> and yeah. it's and it's you know i mean this it, right. it, We've mentioned before that everything springs from WJFK here in Washington, and that's where you know that's where we are right now. So, and the thought of, of suing our own company, a, a subsidiary of our own company, is ridiculous because it would just make the Infinity part in which we're doing okay. It would make mm -hmm. them hate us, right? And it's just dumb. It, it's dumb. Even if we'd win, we'd spend more money trying to win than right. we would getting the money that that oh, we're yeah. owed. Yeah. So that's one of our problems in this. We've, we've asked Westwood One to please come up with some type of a game plan. That's all we want. We, we've what said to them, you know, to give us something we can work with here. You know, and, so we can go on and do what we do, which is this radio show, and, and that's what we're waiting for. And the reason that we are so ultimately frustrated is that we've, it, it, by contract, last December 6th, the company was supposed to start working on this. It's now 10 months later, nine months later. Nothing's been done, and all we're hearing is, give us a couple of days to think about this. Give us a couple of days to think about it. And, they, listen, the couple of days were up on September 2nd, and we bent again on September 2nd. But now, we presented them with an option where we, you know, this would all go away, and we'd let them do what they do. Right. You know, we're not making... There's not a, a, a list of demands here. What, what we simply want is simplicity, and uh, it just doesn't seem to get done. And, and you get to a point when something's not getting done where you have to, you have to try to make something happen. Mm -hmm. And it's a downer. And I've looked on some uh, some websites. I was looking at WashingtonPost.com the other day, and uh, somebody had written in on something about you know, well, why would they do this? And and the dummy at the, the Washington Post writes back, I don't see how anybody could just throw away listeners. And what we've never been able to fully explain, and, and we probably won't be able today, is that if it was that simple, if it was just a question of let's keep the show on and keep all of our listeners happy, we'd do it. We would do it, and, and in fact, we've done it for the last three years. Mm -hmm. sure. We've done it for the last three years, and at some point it's your own personal integrity on the line where you say to these guys, Listen, either a deal is a deal is a deal is a deal, or it's not a deal. Right. And they talk about loyalty, company loyalty, being loyal to Westwood One. I say, you know, where was the loyalty in Philadelphia? Now, our performance, good, bad, or indifferent, should not be taken into account here because we had a contract with this company mm -hmm. for this show to run until September 30th. A no-cut contract. They came back to us and said, we're taking you off. And at that point, even then, we said, okay. Yeah, it's right. going to happen anyway. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. But but then they got to go on. Then the program director, Tim Sabian, has got to go into trades and announce the rebirth of WISP and how happy he is that that now you'll be able to listen to the station. Yeah, all yeah, keep day. an eye on that. You know, and the, how great it will be to have music all day. Mm -hmm. And really, that's just... You know, it's it's petty, but it's it's just the last slap in the face. that I'm tired of hearing, and Mike's tired of hearing. Uh, you know, I don't want to make this just me here. 
about loyalty. But there's no loyalty. The only loyalty here is how good our last ratings book is. Mm -hmm. And that's how it's always been. And right now, the only station that we have a real contract with is WJFK. And we don't believe that uh, when you go out over the country and you offer this show to all these different cities, that you suck the value out of the show. We right. think that there has to be value for this, this show, and there is not. And, and that is the main problem that we have. And we'd be happier just being local. I mean, I'm very happy being syndicated, very hallable, very happy being, you know, at the near the top of the food chain in our hometown. Mm -hmm. I mean, we we make just ridiculous money for doing the show from WJFK. We make pennies for syndicating it and giving it away to stations nationally. And it would it, it was even that arrangement was okay until we realized that. There was no plan to further any growth, right? To to get any any more of these pennies, to get any more of these markets. That it's like, well, we've got Don and Mike, and well, look, they're, they're on, on in, in Little Rock. Yeah, they're on in in Little Rock. They're on in oh, the, and Buzz. I found out no, we're not on in Little Rock. Oh well, excuse me, I they, misspoke. They, they, canceled, uh, <laughs> they canceled us in Little Rock. Uh, uh, it's our belief that what <laughs> what they would do is go into a market like, for instance, Duluth, Minnesota. Uh -huh which is the second, uh, 202nd smallest market in America, to radio station KXTP, and they'd say, how would you like Notre Dame football? And the team said, the, the station says, oh, Notre Dame football would be great. They say, okay, you can have the rights, but you have to run Don and Mike. Uh -huh. This is not a question of them going out and saying, we've got a pretty unique show that gets pretty big ratings. Right. It's a question of us being used as a pawn for Notre Dame football or Monday night football or whatever it is and it's just not worth our time and Brilliant. and really it's not worth your guys time because you, you don't hear the, you don't turn the show on to hear us go on like we're going on so we just wanted to say very politely and very respectfully we really mean this thank you to everybody that's listened to the show the 10 or 11 years we've been syndicated right and we want to say that just in case anything goes down tomorrow mm -hmm. the next day whatever that we you know, we somehow lose this thing, yeah. and uh, and it's a it's a drag. It's a very it's not an anger thing as much as it's just kind of a bummer. It's yeah. just a slow. You know, the anger part is. Uh, I think you you're like me. The anger part is still there, but it's it's more like being worn out. It's like being worn down by how long certain things take to get done, mm -hmm. and and that's the frustration here. And you know, we we're, we're a specialty situation. There's no doubt about it. And it, it does require, if you're going to have this show syndicated, it requires effort be made. Effort has to be made. We are not the talking conservative head that you hear on all these talk stations across the country. This is a very niche-oriented program. We, we succeed very well where we, were, where we are put in the right situation. Mm -hmm. But you got to pay attention. It's just not happening with this show. No. They, they don't pay attention to it because it has to be done that way. And listen, this is the part that to me is the most amazing. We get that, okay? Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, we're not a priority with this company, with Westwood One. So let's stop it because it's embarrassing for us. Yeah. It makes us mad with the financial ramifications. It makes us mad the fact that, that we don't, you know, that a show like... <sighs> And I don't even know these guys. I only heard the show driving through Charlotte. Mm -hmm. John Boy and Billy. I'm sure many of you guys who listen to us in the South know these guys. I've heard that. I've heard that a lot. Mm -hmm. I I heard the show. Seemed to me to be, you know, mouth of the South. Lots of you know y'alls and good old time stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, listen, here's the deal. Those guys got like a hundred radio stations that run their show. It's amazing. And those hundred radio stations that run their show, those hundred radio stations actually pay them a salary. Wow. I mean, do you get the, the difference? Yeah. They're, they're doing Hee Haw Radio, but somehow Hee Haw Radio has figured out a way to do it so that, and, and, and when I say by paying for it, the station has a reason to care about the show. That's right. Right now, if the station picks up our show with Westwood One, the station holds all the cards. If they get it and they don't like it, all they have to do is call up and say, that's it, goodbye, Don and Mike are gone. Right. And we have no, we have no options at all. We go, oh, okay, that's another market gone. 
Partly because they've not been told correctly the type of show it is. Right. Uh, partly because they, they got complaint calls on the first day. But mainly because they're given to us, we are given to them as, here you go, take them. And if you don't like them, hey, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you do it the other way. You go out and you say, you want these guys, it'll cost you, Ocean City, Maryland, it costs you $500 a week. What you would pay a disc jockey. Mm -hmm. Well, if they're paying what they would pay a disc jockey after... One or two days of complaint calls, they're not going to fire the disc jockey. Mm -hmm. right. And we just we don't get any of those breaks. And it's a bummer, and I'm tired of obsessing about it. I'm tired of bringing it to, to everybody's attention on the show. And the easiest way is to just say, Westwood One, we've, we've made our case the act as, as well as we possibly can. Right. Either respond... Or die. No, I'm yeah. sorry. I just felt like I felt like saying that. I, I, I had to lighten the mood a little bit. Yeah. Just in case, or die. No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. But just in case we don't get the chance to ever say this again, mm -hmm. you know, seriously, even Sacramento. Yep. Thank you for listening. I agree with that. We do appreciate Rob, that. I'm sorry. I have to say it. They've we, made this show very successful out there. We appreciate it. And if it means anything to you guys in Sacramento, the fact that you have made us so successful in Sacramento in the big picture has meant absolutely nothing. And that's part of, and that's part of why we're frustrated. Yeah. Because it should. Yeah, you would think, hey, Sacramento We've is... got this great success story in Sacramento. You'd think that would be something you'd use to build on. Well, nope. I mean, we, we were used to being the best-kept secret in Washington. Mm -hmm. Now we're used to being the best-kept secret in Sacramento. Right. And in, in Reno and, and in Baltimore. You know, and in the cities where we do well... It's just we're there, and it's just it's just crap. And these guys are really just all weaselly, slick, smelly jerk faces who would be happy with status quo. Mm -hmm. And the one thing is, we just can't be status quo anymore. Absolutely, and that's, that's it. all. That's I'm it. Out. Right there. That's well good. said. So thank you for listening. Done and done. I like that. That's maybe, that's a good way to sum it up. Maybe it'll be on tomorrow in your in your city. Maybe it won't. Uh, Nothing would make us happier than to come back and say, hey, we, we had a meeting of the minds, everything w got worked out, N and I really want to stress that. Nothing would make us happier than to have that situation Amen. go down. Amen. And, yeah, I'm not going to say that. We, we, go ahead. we don't go ahead. negotiate on the radio. Uh, I'm not going to do that. And, I, you know, but I'm going to tell you, it, it really wouldn't be all that much to get this thing worked out. Oh, and no. what, what amazes me is, first of all, the amount of time that passes and how slowly the wheels turn. However, we see, on the other hand, for instance, when Tim wanted to fire us early at WYSP, Bam. there was no problem making that decision. Uh. Uh, the station that we used to be on in New York, uh, that they signed that station on four months ago, that Blink-102 thing we uh, made fun right. of. How's that well, doing? Well, they, they clean house there today. Wow. So, so, you know, if given the opportunity, this company can move. Yeah, right. This company can move. They can get things done. Mm -hmm. It's just... For us, we've just never been on that fast track. We're always, there's a train in front of us, and we're always the guys with that hand car thing. You know? Pumping yeah. to beat the band. Yep. Absolutely. So but I tell you, Matt, if there's one message to get out, if, we, if, we, if this is the time we get it out, we cannot begin to tell you how much we appreciate the people all over this country that listen to this show. It's gratifying. And you know what? And uh, having gone to Las Vegas... And got it out there. I mean, it, it, it means a lot to us. I know you get it wherever you go. To go into a, a town on the road and have a cab driver go out of his mind, mm -hmm. you know, about the show because he, he knew that, that, uh, that I was on the Donna Mike show. Right. It, it's great. And, and it's, cool. it, it's a drag that this has to be because you know what? This show translates all over the country. And, and I, I, I wish it wasn't going down like this. Yeah. I really do. And, you know, just so you know, I've had this discussion with my wife, who normally is a very rational one when we have these discussions. And I know for a lot of you guys that have listened to the show, you know, you, you, you've heard everything. You've heard, uh, goddamn, uh, over the last ten years. I, I have been <laughs> arrested. like Bobby Knight just then. <laughs> goddamn. But I, mean, but I mean really, over the last ten years, you've heard... I've been arrested. Mike's been divorced. My 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 kid has gone g grown up and gone to college. Yeah. Rob has had a, a two kids. Mike's daughters are, are growing. Buzz is sterile and taking Viagra <laughs> and wearing a beer. Uh, Levitra, uh, 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 yeah. excuse me, uh, Levitra. Oh, all I of mean, them, really. My wife was saying you must understand the connection that people are making yeah. with you guys, and we know that that's the great thing about the show, and that's why we're sorry that we have to go.
or that that we're going to probably be going. Yeah, apparently, that we know that that's why you listen to the show and that's why why you support the show with the great ratings. And even though we yell at you and and me in particular wish you death, mm-hmm. and and Mike and Rob do their dances pointing at their genitals. Yes, and, you know, even though at those moments we're very mad, we we still we still like you. We don't always point at our genitals. Most of the time, we point at where the bad stuff comes out. Yes. <laughs> at the hole. <laughs> the so, that, hole. so that's all we wanted to say. Very good. And, and transcribe that and, and get that right out to all the fans, Rob. Very good. Get that in a, in a, max, in a mass fax. Transcripts of the Don and Mike want, program are available on Lion or Lion Lion. I want a, uh, a mass email to everybody that listens to this show. It's going to take a few moments because I'm carving it in stone. Very we good. We will send it out to everybody. Send out the good. tablets. Good. Yeah. And then go down to Alabama, wherever they took out the, the Ten Commandments. <laughs> Use and that granite. And put that it. there. Yeah. Put that right there. Yeah. So that's that's what's happening, and that's all we're going to discuss about that on today's show. Okay. And, and I know, I, you know, hopefully we will be on uh, in uh, in Baltimore tomorrow. Hopefully, uh, you know, and we're very close to that market. Obviously, more physically and otherwise. I, I'd like to just say thank you. Thank you for last night. <laughs> I, I just wanted to, I wanted to say that. And I, I hope people in Baltimore aren't hating me for this. I hope they, they know that I've been a lifelong Red Sox they fan. Do. And, and, and I just wanted to say, Mike? you know, thank you. We do have... Rob, is this, Hello? Button, is this button hit? Yeah. We've got, Hello? we've got a dummy caller. Okay. Hello, Donna Mike Show. Yeah, hi. How are you doing? I'm a long-time <laughs> listener. Yes. Uh, first-time yeah. caller. Right. I, I just wanted to tell you that uh, I've been listening to you for about the last 20 years, ever since the days of Waiva, and I can't say that I won't miss you. Um, where, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Sterling, Virginia. And you listen to us on what station? Yes. What station do you listen to us on? 106.7. Uh-huh. That's the one station that we're sure we're going to be on tomorrow. Oh. I apologize. When he said network, I thought you meant the whole network. No, no. It, 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 were you going to say you won't miss us? No, I will no, miss. No, no, he you will miss. That's us. why. That's why he was the, 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 the right there. The, the selected. No, 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 we're 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 still working for this company here in Washington. No matter what, you, you'll hear us tomorrow on WKFK. Well, no matter what. <laughs> oh, well, that's fantastic. Oh, you made my day right there. Well, then I'm. Oh, well, thank you. In a way, you've made ours. Thank, yeah. Bye bye. Thank you for calling us. Bye bye. Bye bye. So I'm not clear. We have to come in tomorrow. Yeah, right? Rob, we're coming in. We're coming in for even for me. A... Yes, Rob. Even you. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike Show. W- Whatever. WJFK Live 105 96 Rock. Hello. No, please don't go. I don't know what I'll do without you guys. You know, this phone sounds like old time radio, and not the, I will be and not the real not the real crying guy either. No. Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Uh, <laughs> hello there, uh, Don and Mike, JFK. Hello. Hey, this is Don in Green Bay. Hi there. Hey, is there any chance that you guys would consider broadcasting on the Internet? Because, I mean, for those of us that are not in the D.C. area... That's another, us- that's another great question that we get asked all the time, and I'll tell you, we would love nothing more than for this show to be available on the Internet. However, again, our company, CBS, Viacom, Infinity, Westwood One, whatever it is, they don't allow streaming. You know, even if you have us uh, in, in whatever town you're in, uh, the, the Internet is just... Uh, I've heard so many people talk about the fact that it's so convenient, especially for workers, yeah. you know, to plug into a, a radio program and put it on when, you're, you know, when they're at the workstation and do that. Yeah, we, we, you for can, that we, reason hey, alone, I'd like to be not, on the Internet. It's not our decision. We don't hold yeah. it. We, we want it. We've said we want it. We agree with you. Okay, and the only other thing is, what can those of us in listener land do to, to help your guys' cause? Who really? Who call and harass? Really? really? Nothing. And at this point, don't even call and harass, because it's not your local stations. It's it's higher up the food chain than that. Yeah, we're trying to get it all dialed in, and, uh, you know, it's it, if we don't sound optimistic, it's because we're not. Just call one triple right, well, eight, one triple eight love, jerk face. <laughs> we, we, love, we love you guys. Our soccer fans are going to miss you, Don. And we love you, and Rob has just uh, dropped a all is potted well. plant. All is well. Thank you. See you later. Well, now you know. You know what's really going to be silly is if this gets worked out and we're still here tomorrow. Eh, not really. Then all these good feelings will be totally wasted. We can turn that around. What are you looking at? I'm looking at BBF over here. BBF. Baldy Butterfingers. Oh, that's pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike JFK. Hello. Don and Mike, this is Jack what's Spokane. That? Hi there. Hey, we're going to miss you guys up here. Well, we'll miss Spokane too. And just think. If you're no longer able to listen to this show, God forbid, come tomorrow, 
You're going to miss the progress of Rob losing his hair right. <laughs> over the next five years that Mike and I are, are doing the show together. Because Rob but really, it, even though he won't admit it, he's very uh, Hank Kingsley, uh, Dr. Phil. Yeah, well, we've uh, seen him photograph from the air. Gero Yepremian like on the top. <laughs> Only place I'm thin, Don. He's very Gallagherish. Yeah, <laughs> it's incredible. The, the he's top. growing it out long on the sides now. Hello. <laughs> Don and Mike, JFK, hello. Don and Mike, you can't leave me. Where are you calling from? Sacramento. Mm. But I'm not one of those. Listen. Are, are you a Wiccan priestess? <laughs> I could be. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. You know what? I just wanted to say that, you know, Frida was right. I've listened to you guys ever since you've been here. I've grown up with Bart and, and Mike's kids and everybody. And it's just, you know, you're part of my family. Ah, that's nice. And we'd like... Uh, oh, boy. Do you need a moment, Mike? I need a moment. <laughs> I'm Bert we, uh, we like it. We'd like it to be different, but, uh, gosh, if it all happens like we hate to think it's going to happen tomorrow, though, we'd like the one opportunity to come on for one time during a show and say we do appreciate everybody listening. Yeah. We do. So at least yeah. you, the last thing... Now, we, we might get mean later in the show today. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh no, 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 no. Not what? for Sacramento. Oh, yes, especially for Sacramento. And so, may, I, may I say specifically to even the people who have uh, had cancer wished, wished on them on this show, uh, thank you, too. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I would have to see a list by list accounting of that because <laughs> that's a pretty big one. That, yeah, you're you're pretty hot when you wish cancer on people. That's pretty big one. Although I've just wished specific cancer, butt cancer, right. yes, butt cancer, penis cancer, eye cancer. No, I don't think you've ever done no. eye cancer. Now, yeah. uh, Don and Mike, JFK. I'd like to see which is a longer list: the cancer list or the getting hit by a bus list? Because ah, I yeah. think they're probably in the running with each other. Hello, Don and Mike show, JFK. How's it going, Don and Mike? All right. I, too, have listened to you for a while, but I, I, I'm pretty pissed. I think you guys are being a bunch of, I would say the P word, but I don't think I can. You can say pussy. Why do you think we're being pussies? Because you're, you're rocking, the, you're bringing down seven figures or more. And you're, you're pissing over pennies about more brackets, more, All right. more listeners. And, and listen, you brought it on, so I'll ask you. Let's, okay. say, that, let's say that you're in the favorable position of earning... A, a decent salary from one radio station, or, or wh wh what's your business? Because I'm not, not busting your balls. I'm in. No, 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 I, I'm in no, no. I, make six, I make six figures. I'd love to make. Seven. No, no, hold on. What do you do? Just tell me what you do, please. I, I'm, a, I'm in sales. You're in sales. All right, you're sales. Right. Now I'm not busting your balls. That's all right. Let's you say can. you got. Let's that's say you got one client. Your main client, the, the, the guy that sends you out to sell the 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 pills, and he's paying you, as you said, six figures. That you're making a great income. And all of your clients that you go to, that you hawk these pills to, your boss says to you, even though you think you should be getting a commission on that, that you're not going to get anything. And that if you're supposed to get five cents for every pill that you get, you only end up getting half a cent for each pill. And maybe you would take that for a year. Maybe you would take that for two years. Would you take that for ten years? If it was just... If it was just Putting it that way, you, you probably have a good point. So you, it's, it's almost on principle is what you're saying. There, you, you know, know what? I'm, I'm not, not going to tell you and, and, and lie to you and say that there's not a money issue here. Obviously, there is a money issue. But, yes, the principle of the matter enters into it probably more significantly than any other kind of negotiation we've been involved it's in. It's about respect. And, and it's a enough. question it's about... It's Deuce Daly or Priest Holmes that I'm listening to. You know what? will get that one. But, but, but here's the deal. It's really... About doing it right or not no, doing it. No, and listen, here's the deal. It's not about Deuce Daly or Priest Holmes because I, I, cause I'm not, I'm not saying I don't have a good contract. I have a good contract with one team, with WJFK. I don't have a contract with. Where are you calling from? Sacramento. I don't have a contract with KHDK. Mm -hmm. I don't have a contract. Mike doesn't have a contract with these stations. And we're just and, we're, and and tell me something else, just so you understand where we're coming from. Let's say you went through ten years of that in your job, and then your boss at the pharmaceutical company signed a, a contract that said he would fix it, that said he would do everything he could to fix it. And ten months later, even though you had a legal document, nothing had been done. What would you do? Would you, no matter how much money you're making? Would you still just bend over and let the man shove it up your ass every day? That will not see the light of day. How you, much money do you lose by? I mean, do you, are you losing a, a chunk of change if you leave? Here's the deal: the money that we're losing.
is not even equivalent to the amount of money that, it, to break it down, and honestly, it's not even equivalent to the amount of money that Mike and I can make just on bonuses for WJFK. So it's uh, not a money issue. It's not a money issue. It's a doing it right issue. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's running this show the way it should be run. Well, you guys are right, but I'm still pissed that if I have to, lose, if we don't get to listen to you. But you can get it on the internet. You just listen to radio, internet radio. I can I get like 106.7. All right, well, then good for you, and I hope we I hope we explained our side to you a little bit. Uh, you, 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 you won me over, but good luck, guys. Hope to hear you tomorrow. It's really not about about money. No. Because, yeah, and we hope it gets worked out, all right? I, I, think we, maybe I think we've covered it. Okay. I really do. It makes exactly. me sad. I'm just going to get all all buttery. Get all? You'd be like Jerry Reed? I, I just can't. I can't talk about the syndication arrangement without <laughs> cloud top. Hello, Donovan. <laughs> JFK, Hello. Radio Dodge. Howdy. How are you? I don't want to beat a dead horse from yesterday, but I know a certain recently promoted general manager that probably has stool in his blood from having his head up the tail ends of network executives. You know, I uh, where did that expression ever come from? Having Beating a dead horse. I, don't I mean, I, I'm not aware that anyone's ever really done that in history. If it's uh, you know where there's you know, dead horse lying in the. I bet some cowboy did somewhere. Some yeah. cowboy Trying once got mad beat, that, beat a dead horse. Yeah. Had, you know that the, perhaps the horse got shot and the cowboy got thrown off and, the, and he got mad. And he just he just took out his broom or whatever he had in his saddle and started. <laughs> Why I love horse. working with you because you just clear stuff up for me all yeah. the time. It simply means that there's no more to be gained from the animal. Uh, no matter how hard you hit it, it's not going to pull your car. But you could still. Well, you knew that when the horse keeled over and laid in the street. But your and man, your leg's broken anyway because the horse is lying on top of you. Have you ever had a car break down on you? Yeah. You ever gotten out and kicked the car? Oh, many times. Yeah. You're beating the dead horse. Ah, Precisely. Yeah, I see where you're, you're coming from. Except, okay. except the car can be brought back to life. Very good boy. Very clever, boys. So can a horse. With prayer. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> on my JFK. Hello. Uh, Rob Costello, Gaithersburg. I'm just calling to gloat. <laughs> We're getting the Don and Mike show, and you're not. <laughs> Sacramento and everybody else. Man, wow. Eddie Boo Boo. Costello. Costello. How come you don't uh, pronounce pronounce the name uh, properly like the Abbott Costello. and Costello? Costello. Abbott and Costello. <laughs> Costello. <laughs> all right. See you later. Hey, uh, Eddie Boo Boo. Okay. All right. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here, you retard. <laughs> Okay, goodbye. No. <laughs> Let's clear them out and get a call 100 here. Uh, phone number from any of you, you cities, any of you stations, any of you animals, 877-365-3636. Abbott and Costello. We have we have some stuff, so be the 100th caller right now. Donna Mike on JFK at 342. JFK. Oh, and Rob, I need the music. We Do not have it? Oh. Put, put our music in. There it is. For God's sake. Music. And now is she ready? Hello? 106.7. WJ. FK. That's part of that guy I don't like. At the beginning, 106.7. Hey, bud, what's your problem? 352, good guy. Weather, 58 tonight. Sunny, 78 tomorrow. Now, D.C., 71. Baltimore, 73. Ocean City, 69. WKFK. Okay, I get it. You're joking. Well, I've got a sense of humor. I laugh at Tony Danza. Of course, if you aren't joking, I feel bad and I apologize. I laugh at Tony Danza. I laugh at Tony Danza. I laugh at Tony Danza. Tony Danza. All right, that's it. That's it. WJFK. I mean, that's not that it's it. Don and Show. Occasional a-holes. Don and Mike. And don't forget regional treasures. Yeah. Let's get a call 100. Here we go. Get some of the Don and Mike show stay at the Essex house. Too cool for school. <laughs> and look at this. No market exclusivity today. What the hell? Last day. Yeah. Hello, Don and Mike show. Uh, yeah, am I on um, call 100? Yeah, you are. And what's your name? Matt. Hey, Matt, where are you from? Uh, Wichita, Kansas. KFH. Well, listen, thank you for listening. If things go awry tomorrow, uh, my friend, oh, it's a challenge. <laughs> a $25 gift certificate to Applebee's. Boo! Try Applebee's never-ending basket of sm slow-smoked ribs smothered in sweet and tangy BBQ sauce. That is a never-ending basket. I mean, it goes on forever. Do it until the ambulance comes <laughs> at your local Applebee's. <laughs> uh, but wait, there's more. You've won the Divid box set. Of uh, 24. Don't chew the bones. Season number two now available on Divid in a seven disc collector's edition. Uh, it's addictive. Uh, the TV show 24. Mm -hmm. We do love it. And thanks for listening, my friend. Hey, thought we we're going to miss you. 
Us hope too. You guys, hope you guys can stay on. Us too. <laughs> uh, yeah, we we yeah, we hope uh, we we hope in all of those regards. Yes. Yeah, eat chew those bones. They'll they'll fragment, and tear up your intestines. We just don't know. I mentioned your teeth. Um, I gotta uh, make a quick call, and then we have some jail mail coming up. And then they're just on with the tele with the uh, tele with the tele. On with the radio. On with the radio show. Yes. On with the radio show. On with yes. It's the been, regular. It's been a taxing week. There she is. Hi, sweetie. Darling, now listen to this. What? As you know, we are uh, planning on socializing with the with the bird banks this weekend. With the bird bank. <laughs> and Buzz Bird Bank yes. came in yesterday and had his Mike uh, Ditka erectile dysfunction pill. And he was going to give it to Frida to to take over the weekend to see if if and you do you still yeah. have it with you? I do. And he now, still is. He still is. Yeah, I still am. It's right here. Now here's here's the deal though. My wife today goes to the OBGYN. Uh huh. Oh, no need to X out the phones, guys. We had that conversation yesterday. Just let them ring. Yeah. yeah. Let, let freedom ring. Let them in. <laughs> so anyway, she goes to the OBGYN. Just for my checkup. All right. Everything's fine down there. I could have told the doctor that. <laughs> she's 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 calling me up. She says everything's okay. Now I'm watching uh NFL Live on ESPN, which which is incidentally the show that NBC used to call their NFL show when they had football. But I guess there's only so many names you can call a show if it's NFL Sunday or NFL Now, whatever it is. They rejected my idea talking with hands. So I'm <laughs> so I'm watching this show. <laughs> and I, you know, I'm, I'm considering my fantasy lineup, and she, out of the blue, she calls and she says, "Hi, everything was great at the OBGYN." I said, "Good." She said, "You can't take Viagra." No, I said because you weren't listening to me, which is why I got irritated. It was like talking to a kid on the phone who's watching TV at the same time. I said, "Just, just this conversation." I thought you'd like to hear these words from my mouth. I said, "You were right about the Viagra thing for a healthy man." That if that if if you're a regular guy uh -huh. and you can get it up, uh -huh. why take it? That you take no. You see, you didn't listen. What the doctor, when I was chatting with him about it, you know, what what he told me was that a, a healthy man, if he if he takes it, then I'll, you know, maybe nothing will happen. Maybe it's wonderful, like Buzz. But you run the risk of with some. What happens to some healthy men is that they get it up and they can't get it down. And and how many hours could that go on that for? That could go on for hours. And what the doctor told me is uh, that's not a good thing for your for your you know what? Yeah, yeah. especially if you're having a pool it, party. It can be very painful. In some men, it's lasted up to 24 hours. And and even, they were not comfortable. And with then it. not even painful. It, it it you don't get blood flow down there when you have that. Oh dear. So it's not just painful. You know, while it's happening, it's, da it's dangerous for the health of your. Well, what could happen? Could it fall off? <laughs> and so it's it, could it's it a, wither and die? It's I, a penile it, alert. It could it could damage you. It's, wow. It's Frida's penis tip of the day. So to speak. Yep. Good tip. Frida's tip. My wife, Frida, her penis tip today is... You said if, penis tip. Well, it's a tip about penis. I understand, yeah. Dave. <laughs> Honey, again, your penis tip today is... Don't take Viagra if you don't have a problem. Well, Buzz, what do you say to that? I, I say that the problem that you've outlined does happen, but only very, very rarely. Yeah, Buzz is willing to take the risk, but I don't want my husband to risk his Batmobile. As you called it the other day. My penis. Very nice. Very good. My Batmobile. Right. Don't worry, honey. I had, I had I had no plans on taking Buzz's uh, softy pill, but <laughs> now are are you still going to take it? Did you ask the doctor? No, about I asked the doctor. It, 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 with some women, it has a very pleasurable effect. So huh. yes, I will. I was telling the doctor yes, and if I want, I if I like it, I can get more. You know, the 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 doctor way. Yeah, that's right. Because on some women, well, so, 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 yeah, some women, not all women, it uh it you know, it it's very pleasant. Now, will the grand experiment be taking place this weekend? Uh, well the, that's the scheduling problem we're having. He, like Buzz, told me the full stomach thing and we have no the football problem, so we we have to that, see when there's that, that doesn't mean anything. Let's say we go to dinner and and you have a full stomach. As we say good night, you you take the pill, and by the time you get you guys get home, yes, it, it, but, it should be kicking in. By the time it works, then my husband's asleep. I see. I'm asleep, I see. Buzz. Okay. Yeah. I right. go to sleep like, like clockwork, like a baby. It, yeah. it, it, he does have a Batmobile, only it's in the garage a lot. <laughs> And really, I'm pissed off at Channel 5. Why? I got so used to going to sleep to Jerry Seinfeld. 
at 11 o'clock. And even though I love The Simpsons... Would they put, are they put The Simpsons the on? Because now they run The Simpsons, how many, three, four times a day now? <laughs> hour and a half a day, six... Hour and a half a day they run The Simpsons. Wow. And I got used to Jerry Seinfeld at 11. I could put it on. It was... And even when I got past the fights with Frida about the, the laughter and stuff, right. uh -huh. it was the one show that she finally agreed on was okay. See, it, 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 comedy is your life. You're lulled to sleep by a sitcom. Well, I, I mean, love right it. there, that's subconsciously you're thinking funny. Well, I like I like it when it's something that I don't have to think about it, and especially on Seinfeld, I know them all. Right. So I go to right. sleep. In the you should get one of those radios. Only instead of the ocean sounds, it have a laugh track. <laughs> and you know, nothing is, gives me a more calming sleep than thinking, "Oh, this is the one where Jerry says hello about the lady's belly," yeah. and, and they end up going up onto the top floor of the building, and, and Kramer throws over the giant balloon that's full of oil. Right. Jerry's trying to get her attention, saying, "Hello, hello, hello," <laughs> and then she and see, I don't even have to see the whole thing to fall asleep happy because as soon as it comes on in my mind, I already go. You know. Oh, this is a good one. So now I can just chill out and think about this. And it relaxes you. you know, and go to sleep. That's like the little boy who likes the same fairy tale read to him every night before. That's exactly you. what it is. A bedtime story. Absolutely. It's, Jerry Seinfeld offers you your bedtime story. <laughs> Homer cannot deliver on that bedtime story. Uh, here's the thing with Homer. And this is a, and this is a, and incidentally, that's what we call the Simpsons, the Homer, Homer show, the Homer show, Homer show. This is, this is a compliment, to, a compliment to Homer. Homer, Homer show. Homer's sometimes stimulating. Sometimes even on a rerun uh -huh. that I know, yeah, Homer is so funny, yes, that you can't get to sleep. He demands my full attention. It's yeah. good. And it's that cartoon audio. Mm -hmm. So, it's, you know, it's, my... it's, it's very, very shrill. And there's a lot of Homer stuff that you forget about. You know, when he's just looking at something, and he, you know, just something, a piece of plywood, he goes, mmm, <laughs> plywood. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, sure. That's where you can't turn your brain off. You've seen every episode of The Simpsons, haven't you? I think. Mm -hmm. I think most of them. See, I don't think I have. I think I think I think I've seen almost everything of everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> everything everything that's decent, at least. In You've my seen every television show ever made. Uh, the good ones. It was good. Yeah, it oh, was good. oh, I have more exciting news. I forgot. What? Um, the doctor also told me that uh, they're coming out with something new in a year or so. Buzz. There's a third pill coming out. Yes, that's One correct. One that lasts a whole weekend. The yeah, effects think... last a whole weekend. Forty-eight hours of non-stop boners. No, you're just—he you told me that for a man, you don't—you—you you don't have one in, unless somebody gets you excited. Right. And then you are ready to go. None of them do anything unless you're, you know, in that situation. Right. Yeah, but obviously is... what we've heard is if you get in that situation, you might not be able to get out of that situation. That's, that almost never happens. But, baby, did you ask your doctor about Buzz's odd behavior at the end of the show yesterday? <laughs> the fact that during he the last... that was a common side effect. During the last, <laughs> during the last hour of the show now, yesterday... that happened. Yeah. When Buzz it... took off his shirt and put on a woman's bra <laughs> for no reason. That's why I'm not afraid, because I already wear a bra. So why shouldn't I experiment? All right, so that's the news. Buzz, okay. you're playing with fire. Uh, always. Fire. It's my life. Uh, I love you, baby. Love you too, sweetie. See you later. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, she was all excited. So, <laughs> oh, you were right about Viagra. And then the next thing was, we should tell Buzz. <laughs> yes. Thank you. I appreciate that. I bet, no, I bet he already knows. I bet he already knows. He's still eating them like M&M's over there. He is. <laughs> but anyway, he's turgid the, right now. <laughs> if, you got the, if you got the one for Thursday, or, or for Saturday, Jesus, today's Wednesday. You know, I'm really... This Lo whole, are you losing it? This whole thing, this yeah, whole might be the last show thing. I'm sorry. We'll still have each other. Right here. <laughs> Ticker. I know. I know. Yeah. Sad. Uh, okay, let's see. <laughs> Damn oh, we, them. We can take phone calls. Damn and, them for bringing you pain. I think the phone calls, <laughs> oh, they bring you pain. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> they yeah. bring you pain. Yeah, they do. They do a lot of pain. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hello? No. No way. You actually answer your phones? Okay. I thought you guys were off the air. JFK. Yeah, well, how could you, here, how could you out on the streets of Bakersfield, we're going to talk over you, and we're going to have a tear in our beer and a little bit of blood in a stool for you. Ah, uh, oh, I love a bloody you, stool call. Thanks. We appreciate it. Hello, Don and Mike, JFK. Hey, buddies, how are you? We're doing great, thanks. This is Gus in Rochester, and I uh, just wanted to let you guys know I've enjoyed you for the last several years in the afternoons, and you've mm -hmm. made uh, our afternoons great here, and I wish you guys nothing but the best. I certainly respect your decision, but... Uh, the same oh, get a good oh. phone. Oh, my gosh. Oh, this is the last time we might speak. Yeah. And it's ruined by a bad cellular call. Man, I hate that. I wonder if he, I wonder if he pressed the button for roaming charge. Hello, Don and Mike. <laughs> JFK, hello. Hi. Hey. For the first time in about 10 years, I get to hear you guys again. And now I hear you're going off the network. 
Right. Now, where that you, sucks. Where, where are you calling from? Uh, northeast Pennsylvania. You just came on the air here last week. Oh. Huh. Just last week? What, what, what town? Scranton. Well, now, that, oh, that's, that's see, town. once again, let me just say, you wonder why why it is Scranton. Now, that is a that is a town in Pennsylvania that is not finished. Am I right, sir? It's just about finished. Yeah, but <laughs> it, it, how long has it been just about finished? That's the one I drove through where they just haven't finished it. <laughs> but here's my point about, about the whole Westwood One deal. Right. You know how long we've known that we've been on in Scranton, Pennsylvania? Uh, you've been on the air 48 seconds. That's how long we've 48 known. 48 seconds, I figured that. Yeah. That's how long we've known. We're on yeah. a brand new station in Scranton, Pennsylvania? Yeah. Scranton is not a is not a big city, but it is not a small town either. It is a it is a, a rather large area oh, yeah. of Pennsylvania. Is it AM or FM? AM, AM. They all are. Yeah, well, enjoy Notre Dame football, because I'm sure that's why your station picked us up. I'm sure that we were just tossed into some other. Hey, do you want Monday night football? Hey, do you want Sunday night football? Okay. The best thing he, was that you knocked off Sean Hannity. Man. Really? Well, see, yeah. and then that, that's what makes me think even more that they Westwood One must have come up with who knows some better package for him. Mm -hmm. And we were just we were just the, well, that's amazing. We're on in Scranton. We're off in Scranton. My yeah, God, they'll still have Lucinda Bassett. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Don and Mike, JFK. Hello, Don and Mike. Yeah, but it's happening. It's about time I get through. I'm from Louisiana, man. Hi there. Been to y'all for a while, and I hate to see y'all go. Y'all better not go. I'll be so pissed. Yeah, the only it. thing that brightens my day up, I just want to tell y'all, thank y'all, and y'all have a good one. Oh, well, that's thanks. very nice of you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. It's really nice. Don and Mike show. But, Mike, it's better, to, it's better to go out like this yeah, hey, with people, people knowing that we, we do like yeah, it. Yeah, I know. We, we do. Rather than if we just... And that also, if things by some miracle do get worked out, that'll make it better when we come back to Hello, you. Don and Mike. JFK. Hello, Mike, buddy. Hey. How you doing today? Oh, very well, thanks. Hey, I just wanted to wish you all the best. I'm calling from uh, the Bay Area, California. I uh, get you on two stations. K1. I feel like we're going on a cruise. We're dying. <laughs> we're dying. And, uh, are you guys going to be on streaming audio so we can still catch you? No, we've already answered that one, my friend. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. Good luck. So, yeah, streaming audio. You're going to be on streaming audio so we can catch you. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike, JFK. Hello. For old acquaintance, be <laughs> forgot. <laughs> Goodbye, guys. I'll miss you so. Green Bay says adios to you. Go pack, oh, go pack, oh. <laughs> That's nicely That's done. pretty good. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike, WJFK. Hello. DJ John. Yes. You rock. Thank you. You rock, that was sir. awesome. Another bad sofa. <laughs> right. Hello, Don and Mike, JFK. Yeah, I want to tell you guys that uh, I appreciate what you guys do, and I'm going to miss you guys a lot. Wow. Well, hey, hey dude. <laughs> getting silly now. We're going to we're gonna miss you a lot, too, dude. This is getting very silly. I know it is. Hello, Don and Mike. Show. JFK. <laughs> hey, Don and Mike. How are you guys doing? It's almost like we're doing one of those stupid anniversary shows that we used to do. Hello. <laughs> hey, Don. It hasn't gotten stupid yet. Give yeah, it time. Hey, Don, I got now, a question. Now it has. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I got a question. You're, you're looking, talking about the pill earlier. How about if I just send you 4.5 additional pills a day I can get with Joe, and we'll, we'll keep you guys out here? I don't listen. I believe my wife. I, I don't want. I, I don't want to take it. My my. And I really think when uh, when this show starts working for pills. Uh, that's that's going to be our downfall. That's going to be Joe's happiest day. Right. And hello, Don and Mike. We'll show. work for pills. And <laughs> hello, Don and Mike, WJFK. Hello. Hello. Yes, you're on the air. Turn your radio down or ask your many children to be quiet or your cats. <laughs> They're my children who listen to Don and Mike every afternoon on the way home from school. Mother of the year. <laughs> and they're, they are going to miss you as well as I and everybody else gonna. here in and Middletown, know, Delaware. And I know that there's an awful lot of parents out there who just don't have the time to raise their kids. And they, <laughs> they turn on the radio between 3 and 7 because they know it's a safe haven for Junior and Missy to learn about the world. And How many of you pop a out of your V? <laughs> I have two small kids that are used to hearing your voices every afternoon. How old? Uh, six and three. Perfect. Six and three. Well, <laughs> maybe you maybe you could reintroduce your kids to a fellow named Dad. Well, that's who they're on their way to go see now, who's probably listening to me on the radio because oh. he's going to miss you. Oh, well, then listen. Daddy's in the picture. That's why. And six is a, yeah. it's a lovely age. <laughs> well, then listen. Tell your kids what I've... Yeah, I mean this seriously. Tell your kids what I've always told my kids. 
please join Michael Mara <laughs> oh, and the Crap Blues Band <laughs> tomorrow night for the Thursday Night Jam at Brady's in Manassas. Join me, Mike, Brooke Shields, and the AP All-American football team. We'll all be there tomorrow night at Brady's in Old Town Manassas. Thank you. That was very heartfelt. And, uh, you know, it gave me a slight lift in this moment of sadness. Hello, Don and Mike Show, JFK. Hello. Hello, Hi. I'm in Mike. Howdy. I went out and bought a car radio booster so I could listen to you guys after YSP took you off. And I'm up here in Philadelphia listening to you after, uh, from a Baltimore station. Going to need a bigger booster. So hold on. Yeah, let, I know, let, man. Let me, get, let me get this straight. You bought, what did you buy? I bought an antenna booster for my car so that I could get you guys oh. from the Baltimore station. Oh, and I'm in Philadelphia you. right now listening to you. Well, okay, so you bought something to increase the power, and now it's going to be worthless. Well, <laughs> yeah, well it's now worthless, absolutely. I, but it's only really happened in the past week, so I can take it back. There you okay, go. Okay, you can take it back. So you, so you can give the ha-ha to us. Thank you. Well, we, we certainly are going to miss you, Don and Mike. Uh, um, I, man, I, I just don't, uh, don't know what we're going to do from 3 to 7. What? Ever. Hello, Don and Mike Show, JFK. Hello. Yeah, what's going on, fellas? Hey. I just wanted to let you know I'm going to miss y'all. Is this PM? Nah, nah, it's not, man. It's just Tony. 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 Tony? Yeah. From the group? Tony, Tony, Tony? Nah, man. It's just Tony Tennille? What's up, Tony? Hey, hey. I just want to miss y'all, but I'll, I'll be back to hear y'all again in seven Tony. months. Now, is this Tony Dungy? Nah. Tony Perkins? Is this Tony Randall? Tony Little. Tony Braxton, Tony Bennett, Tony Saragusa, wow. Tony the Tiger. You're, you're king of the Tonys. So you just the Tony Awards. You had a you had a moment of clarity with Tony. Uh, you're king of the Tonys. Tony. Yes, man. You're calling from the Washington D.C. area. Yes. Tony, we're not going anywhere. No, I'm, I got to go do a bid, attempted murder. So I'm leaving you guys. Oh, you're leaving. Oh, you have to go to jail for attempted murder. Yeah. Wow, that's oh, pretty heavy, Tony. Oh, you're leaving us. Yeah. I see. How long are you going for? Uh, they said three to nine, but I got to go to Sinister next week. Who did you, uh... Who did you try to off? Ex-girlfriend's boyfriend. Oh, well, well... Well, what went wrong? I feel your pain, sir. So, Mike, you know, I got to next week to Sinister if you need me to handle problems. For you. <laughs> still available. All Thank right. you, Tony. And I do bar mitzvahs. <laughs> Bye. Good night, Tony. See you later. Hello. Don and Mike, JFK. Oh, you million dollar morons. Here we go. Okay. Hi. Hey. How are you? I'm okay. uh, doing pretty good. I uh, just wanted to say that uh, giving up all those millions, you got problems. You JFK ain't going to give you that kind of money. What millions are we giving up? Come on, didn't you go to your son's college and was the million-dollar man? <laughs> Listen to him. All right. Listen now. to him taking what little cells are left in that melon <laughs> and me... patching together a moronic quilt. <laughs> let, me, let me try to explain this to you. We make all of our money from working at one radio station, WJFK. All right. We don't make hardly any money from being syndicated. Well, then I'm staying corrected. Then you what? I stand corrected. I figured most of your money was made through the corporate instead of just the WJFK. I believe the quote was, I'm stand corrected. Mm -hmm. I stand corrected. Yeah, you are now. Yeah. You are incorrect. And let's end this let's end this on a positive note. Your mom nice is nice to hear from someone who understands. Your mom is <laughs> your mom is a it's, it's the only way you can save face. Your mom is a Oh, he's gone. He's like gone. the wind. Sea sucking horn. Oh, I'm sorry. I had to toss it in. We had to get a little bit of that back into the show. I thought it was necessary. Yeah. Hello, Don and Mike, JFK. Hey guys, how you doing? Okay. I just called to say I love you. No and more singing, please. Up. Hello, Don and Mike, JFK. <laughs> By the way, something. What do you care? <laughs> oh, God. All right, that's better. Don and Mike, WJFK. Hello. Don and Mike, right. it's, a it's a beautiful uh, 73 degrees in Vermont, and we wanted to uh, wish you all the well. And uh, can I buy the tapes? Can you send us the tapes? <laughs> send the tapes to Vermont, Don. Go ahead. Send a big bag of tapes. Hello, Don and Mike show, JFK. The satchel. <laughs> I think everyone's missing a big portion of it. Who's going to miss Rob? Uh-oh. <laughs> Rob, no, Rob, Rob, Rob no, is I, a Rob I, hater on the phone. No, 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 no. I love Rob. 
Do you love him? I love him. You love the little laugh in the background. That's awesome. Would you like to speak with Rob? I would love that. Oh, good. Rob, Rob are you are you going to deign to speak to this gentleman? <laughs> I think you've heard. I've heard. I think you've heard his feelings. No, no, no. You oh, don't no, know my, Take a microphone, Rob. You do it all the time. He likes you. He jumps up with when he feels like he's it. He's a then, fan. But see, now he's caught. He's caught. He's got. He's, he's got, got a dilemma. He doesn't know where you're coming from. He's got a psycho fan. My little Nazi. My little Nazi. We love you, Rob. You see, you don't love me. You don't love anything. <laughs> I, I love you. You are void. You are devoid of love and all good things. <laughs> From the moment you unhinged your jaw, I loved you. Yes, okay, well, I think you'll do okay without me, and I will do just fine well, without me, you. Let me ask you, if, if you do uh, care for Rob in the way that you said you did, why was your opening uh, statement in this phone call something like, people do, what, what did he say? It was Who's, who's going to miss Rob? Who's going to miss Rob? Nobody's saying that they're going to miss Rob. Because no one's going to miss Rob, don't you see? Uh, Rob, I think you're wrong. Yeah. I, <laughs> I think you couldn't be more wrong. Well, you're, you're, you're hurting my feelings. I'm, I have, I am flattered. I have flattery uh, tempered with hatred. Yeah. <laughs> Rob, we'll see you at the meeting this weekend. Rob, what? Rob? Rob? Yes. Can you please tell me to f me and f my family? No. No. I want to leave you wanting more. <laughs> That's a showbiz credo, Rob. Yeah. That went well. Hello, Don and Mike. <laughs> Hi, Don and Mike. Hey, JFK. Hello. How you doing? Okay, very well. Thank you. I think management's right on the money, and nobody's gonna miss you guys at all. You snot nosed little brat. <laughs> Thank you. You, you, know, right. you know, it's so nice. It was getting so maudlin that I'm glad we had a call like this. Yeah, but at least you could have stayed on the phone for a second. Oh, he's gone? He's gone. Oh, damn it. And he's gone. Well, now I'm sad again. And he's gone. Okay. Hello, Don. And... Oop. Echo. Oh. Echo. Echo. Luke, I'm your father. Echo. Hello. Hello. Don and Mike. Hey, yeah. it's Don. Hey, listen, I have a theory. Is yes, Rez. Is, is this a very late April Fool's Can joke? You, you guys just doing this? Reservation yeah, weather. Get out the stinkweed. Arr, up and at him. This is Ernie Cutface. Get the lice out, the gribblies. Do you have itchy feet? <laughs> And your question, sir, was? Was, is this all a scam? Are you hustling? Yeah, that's correct. It's we a, are hustlers. It's, it's, it's a, a scam. It's a, it's a joke. <laughs> it's a gag. You're right. <laughs> oh, uncovered. Uncovered we are. Mm. All right, one more telephone mm. call. Uncovered we are. <laughs> one more call, and then we're moving on with the show. A jerk he was. Hey, Enough. Don and Mike, Radio Gods. Howdy. Hey, just want to give you a hearty farewell from Wetch Time. Hey, Don, I've yeah. been a listener since WLS. Wow. wow. So I've been there for a long time, baby, and I'm going to miss you guys like you are not going to believe. Wow. All right. Thank you, darling. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Mike, can you do me a favor? I sure can, you corn-fed beauty. Thank you. Can you tell RJ I said hey? Yes, I will. Absolutely. Thanks, God. Love you guys. You know, you're back. You know Mike's butler? Yes. Yes, I have. I have met RJ. You have. Have you, you had, met? Have you, have you have you had sex with RJ? Yeah. No, I haven't had sex with. Have RJ. you wanted to have sex with RJ? Well, no, because we're very platonic friends. Oh, really? How did you yeah. meet him? I think he had. I me. met him. <laughs> I met him over the internet, and uh, I personally met him in in uh, Kansas. Wouldn't you like to tug those gray sweatpants down around his ankles? <laughs> <laughs> no, I would like to pull that ponytail though. Ah, oh, yeah. that's, a, that's a shock. Like, I got a hip butler, don't I? Mike, oh, yeah, I'm Mike's you. butler is picking up chicks in Wichita on the internet. <laughs> yeah, he's a very uh, he's very active on the net. He, he's a great guy. I, he I really heard is. he's really a nice guy. I was a little offended because uh, you know I, I think of RJ as my personal valet, mm -hmm. and I think he's contacting uh, Ron and Fez on a regular basis now too. Oh, really? And I want Ron Bennington and Fez Wally to know they can't have him. He's my valet. <laughs> he is my. <laughs> <laughs> He's my personal valet. Valet. You're a gentleman's gentleman. Yes, he is, and I and I'm, I'm trying to get him to dress the role. He's a he likes his casual clothes. You want, you want him like the guy on uh, Joe Millionaire, right? You want him dressed exactly like that? how I'd like him to dress. I always thought more like Mr. French. Mm, well, I mean, he uh, you know, either way would be fine with me. But he you know he goes for that uh, that hip hop look. I, you call it hip-hop, I call it unwashed. <laughs> he likes to wear cotton. He wears a lot of cotton. No, it's, a cotton it's, a, it's a fabric that breathes. It breathes. But I, I, you know, maybe I will buy him... I will buy him... <laughs> 
butler's outfit. <laughs> I think he'd look great in. He's your butler, for God's sakes. He's my part-time butler, my pa- part-time valet. Your, your PTB. It's you know, and it's a pretty sweet arrangement we've got going. Good. It you know, sure is. We're 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 friends. We're lovers. <laughs> it's just it's well. Listen to that evil laugh from you. I can't help it. <laughs> so listen, we'll hang up now. We'll go to commercials. You have a nice big jug of uh, goat's blood or whatever it is you're enjoying this afternoon. But Can hey, I tell you one last thing about RJ? Guys. One one last thing about RJ. Everybody loves him. <laughs> okay, thank you for your thank you for the nice call. Lots of love, guys. Bye bye yeah. now. Rob just got bye-bye. it. Bye. Everybody loves Raymond. <laughs> <laughs> Raymond Diaz. <laughs> Mike's butler. That's why he wants to stab me in the eye when I call him Raymond Diaz. Because Mike has a butler. Paging Raymond Diaz. <laughs> Paging Raymond Diaz. Because Mike has a Mexican butler. <laughs> he's not Mexican. Hello, Mike. Hello, Mr. Mike. And he doesn't have a trace of an accent. Oh, he's sure he does. He does not. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Mike. <laughs> and you dress him in the big sombrero. <laughs> but that's better than the butler's outfit. <laughs> he would look phenomenal in that. Hey. With the a bandolier, yeah. you know, with the bullets, mm-hmm. and, you, and you get him a burrow. Oh man, fantastic! <laughs> like you say, I want this TV moved from this room to this room. He goes, maybe I'll call him Sancho. He gets he gets the burrow. <laughs> Sancho gets, Panza. The trailer. Yeah. So you got to go to Giant and get me some of that Michelob Ultra beer. <laughs> right on it, Mike. Some I'll be back in six hours. <laughs> he See? doesn't speak like that. <laughs> not a trace of an accent. Not even a not even a <laughs> thimbleful of accent on on. My I bet he could do one. <laughs> you think he could? I bet he could. I, I've never heard him Sir, do it. Put on the accent. Make me some paella. <laughs> Mike, I will be back in six hours. You mean like now you're doing the Ricardo Montalbán? It will take me three hours to walk or ride the burrow to the Giants and three hours to make it back, sir. He does not have an accent, but if he did... Don Pablo, I'd, the real enchilada. I, I what did Greg Edgar say? Don, Don Pablo is the real enchilada. <laughs> I wish he would adopt some sort of affectation. <laughs> he will. And I think it's a fantastic glimpse. Do you think I should have him? You know, he's bounced around from a couple of jobs to a couple of jobs. Yeah. And, you know, he works with the band. But I, maybe I should offer him the, the, the permanent position of being and have butler. him greet people. Yeah. You know, where, where, you know, I've got a spare room and he could, you know, I'm sure he could. I think he moved out of are his you, place. Are you asking him to move in with you? No. I think you are. You think I am? I think you are. Well, he... he I just don't think he could... He, he, I, I think the tasks that I've given him, mm-hmm. they, they might be overwhelming. Would he clean? I, see, if he doesn't clean, I, I can't... It, it doesn't work. But yeah. if he does clean, it's almost perfect. But I like the best term that you used was a gentleman's gentleman. <laughs> That's him. Mm-hmm. Hello, Mr. Mike. Right. But I mean, really, the, the, if that was the case, if he was going to move in with me full time, the uh, dress code would would have to be altered dramatically. And I think that yeah. the, the, with all of this today, the, the the best inroad that we've made is that that Mike has now finally come clean once and for all mm-hmm. about his relationship with his butler, mm-hmm. Raymond Diaz. <laughs> would you Would you let him caddy for you? Um, I really, I Raymond, think... Rob, that is that is beneath a common butler. That is not is what a gentleman's gentleman does, Rob. No. no. He would he would call Mike's various wenches, you know. And, and you know what? He would probably work on our secret plans for saving the world. You know, <laughs> he knows about the Mike cave. Yeah. Well, I don't have that yet, but uh, you know, he there's a shovel there. And you, we could get it started. It could be like in college. You got the plan with him that you know you got a chick over, you got a girl over. You do that thing where you you, you tie a sock around the door or something so that he doesn't come barging in when when you're there. You know, having a party. He does tend to walk through my house quite often in his stocking feet. You know what? Which disturbs me. What would be best? Hard shoes and a tuxedo. When you're entertaining, he could greet them. Right. Show them to the library, which allows you to make a grand entrance. In a smoking jacket. Uh-huh. If need be. Well, children. Hello. <laughs> Hello, la, la, la. <laughs> Did anybody find this weird that we're discussing the fact that Mike has a butler? Yeah, very strange. Well, I, I, I have a part-time valet. Valet. <laughs> I do not have a full-time. I have not, not offered him the position full-time. Not yet. But you have. But I will be uh, coming up with terms during the next commercial break. You have a part-time butler. I cannot offer medical, though. You have a part-time valet. I might offer. I might <laughs> Healthy guy like that? <laughs> I might offer dental, though. <laughs> See, now that's cruel. That's just cruel. I've really never gotten a look at that mouth. 
I really haven't. I, I always keep my distance. We have a cordial relationship. Many, many times he's 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 driven me places. <laughs> would, uh, you, would you allow him to dress you? Would you allow him to lay out? I would allow I would allow him to lay out the clothes on the bed. Uh, but I, I, you know, when I'm stepping out of the shower, I'd like my privacy. I really would enjoy my privacy, of course. So you throw on the robe, and then would you let him come in and and spike your hair up, or no? I would I would I would allow him to. This is the way I would envision it. At uh, at a prearranged time in the morning. He would come to the room, come upstairs with a tray, with eggs and and whatever breakfast food I required, and my morning paper. Uh -huh. And then, uh, you know, he would excuse himself. He would go over the day's agenda, and then he would excuse himself, go downstairs. That is when I would repair to the men's room, the lavatory, uh, and, and do my business, shower. And while I was in the shower, I would shut the door, and that's when he would... Uh, Retrieve the tray, right? Bring it downstairs and lay out my 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 pre-selected outfit for the day. <laughs> that's 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 the way I'd like that's it. A good plan. And if he's listening to this now, I I hope I'm helping him because I think you know I, I think he can use a little direction as far as you know. As... Elvis always had someone style his hair. Mm -hmm. You could be clothed for that. Yeah, I yeah. mentioned that he could spike your hair. I like that. Maybe just give me a scalp massage. <laughs> You know, that would be, I'd, I'd like nice. to, uh, I don't want to, I, I think I'd like to do my own hair. Okay, well. Every day? <laughs> Listen, it, I tell you what, <laughs> do you have Raymond's phone number? Uh, of course you do. I think I do. Like you don't have it memorized? I don't. I, actually, he's got a new one, and I'm really, I'm being very serious here, but he'll call in. Does he have a, does he have a number besides the the 877 thing? I don't know. I, I mean, he uh, Charlie would know. I mean, he talks. Raymond, to call on the business line and ask for Charlie. I'd love to talk to Mike's butler during our next break. Yeah. Very good. I'd right. love to. I think that's, you know, I think this is really going to be an end to offering him the position full time. That's great. And my life just got one hell of a lot easier. Because now he's just a part-time <laughs> butler. Yeah, uh, it's 425 on WJFK. <laughs> Gentlemen's gentlemen, please. Be right back. JFK 425. WJFK. You have a butler. A gentleman's gentleman. Hello. You are hanging on by a very thin thread. <laughs> and I dig that about you. No contract? I help me. I help you. Help everybody. <laughs> that's my that's my man. Hey, I'm happy to entertain you. Help me! Help me! I... See you, boss. Jerry! Come on, man! Hey! See that's the difference between us. You think we're fighting, and I think we're finally tough. WJFK. Get it? It's subtle, but get it? Sure. I'm glad you enjoyed them, sir, but no, I'm afraid they're not in your radio personality. Listen up, you BM eaters. From Washington, D.C. on WJFK. From Baltimore on Live 105. And from Ocean City on Night Six Rock. You can call Don and Mike toll free at 1-877-265-3636. They're ready to believe Right. Gentle managers of the Dummy Depot. Hi. Don and Mike. And Mike? Yes, sir. No ding dong dilly dia, senor. Ah, it's been a long time. <laughs> it's time for a trip into stately O'Mara Manor. Very good. <laughs> Let's welcome now to the telephone R.J. Diaz, Mike's part time butler. Hello, Raymond. Well, good afternoon. See? Do you hear any trace of an accent whatsoever? None. Actually, we've decided now you should call me Mr. Jeeves, the Internet butler. Mr. Now, Jeeves. Now, yes. uh, well, you're certainly on the Internet. Now, Raymond, uh, <laughs> in all seriousness, you, you do kind of act as Mike's butler in a lot of ways, right? Um, uh, yes, but, you know, Mike and I will probably keep a lot of that private. <laughs> I appreciate that. Wow. How would you feel? I cannot begin to tell you how much I appreciate it. How would you feel about being a manservant at Mike's home? Manservant? Where'd you get that one? Well, I've, I've given that a lot of consideration, and I've wanted to approach Mike with it, but with his busy schedule, 
Well, I, I appreciate you honoring that, and I certainly hope that you continue to honor that. Uh, now, you recently have moved from Richmond. Weren't you down in Richmond working? Yes, I had a contract down there, which... Uh... You're aware of, of how difficult that made my life when you, were, <laughs> when you were working down in Richmond. But what you don't know is, Mike, I would jump up there at least twice a week to take care of things while you were on the air. I understand that. Yeah. I understand. It's 438 on 1067. Can, w- I, can I compliment WJFK. him? WJFK. May I compliment him? Yeah. He's very quiet. When he delivers things to my home. Mm. And he's Raymond, very, very quiet. He's, he's now, it's stealth. It's see, stealth. Here's, here's what people really have to know about this. Thing. Seriously, he is the only one that has a key to, to my... This is not office. a bit. This is a guy that Mike met who works with Mike's band and now is really like Mike's boy Friday. I mean, he's your, he's your valet. He is. He, he does a lot of... Who helped you move out of the New York place? He did. Okay. Who well you, compensated, too. Yes, I have organized a few relocations for Mr. Romero. He even brings his son and his son's friend in on certain tasks. Most recently, uh, when I when I sold the house that I used to live in, yes, and there were a few furniture items that needed to be transported, there he was again wow. for me, Would right get, there. Do, RJ, and I think he's satisfied with the arrangement. R.J., do you Sounds consider like Mike to be a friend, a boss, or something? Not a boss. Uh, associate and friend, yes. An associate and friend. I think that's fine. I'm I'm happy with that. I'm yeah. he's certainly glad he feels that way. Is Mike, we all know Mike has lots of friends. <laughs> is Mike a is Mike a fair employer? Certainly, especially when he uh, is having a good time. Especially when he's drinking. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't want anyone in the listening audience, RJ, to think that you would ever take advantage of those moments when I may be festive. Absolutely not. In fact, mm-hmm. as one should, in my capacity, I watch out your back. Yeah, he does. He watches. He's well, he your back. So he's your. Is he your double D? Your designated driver sometimes? Many times. Huh. Many. Probably times. more than anybody I know. And uh, how, Ray, Raymond, how would you feel about <laughs> doing Mike's laundry? Uh, <laughs> you know, making sure the kitchen is clean. No, you uh, see, Don, you don't understand. I can arrange to have those things accomplished. That's what a gentleman's gentleman does. Exactly. Uh-huh. So you that's it. Do I mean, I, I, you know, and then send me the bill, and that's uh, eh, that's, see, that's even better. That's the way it see, works. This is why, this is why I, I'm really giving some thought <laughs> to the full time position because he can facilitate these things. And isn't that what a butler does primarily? Is facilitate for yeah. a gentleman's gentleman, as you call. Right. Now, on the issue of the dress code. You know that I probably, more than anything else, that's probably what I have issues with. Well, I know you've made many, several mentions about that, but, mm-hmm. you know, they're comfortable clothing, and a lot of times they're, uh, you know. Well, you know, maybe we can compromise here and, yeah. and get, like, uh, uh, using a bad example, Applebee's or TGI Fridays, but <laughs> but perhaps a, an upscale, you know, the Olive Garden. You get them a nice pair of khakis, and you get them a, a, a nice uh, white uh, golf shirt. I, I, I think that it doesn't have to be, although I would like it to be the traditional White, you know, the tails and the, the tuxedo What jacket. if we arranged for an outfit like that that just zipped up the back? <laughs> and that way you wouldn't have to fold No, no I don't want him to look like a mime. No, you think about, you think about this. A you big have, mime. You have, you have the golf shirt made that, sa- that it says like M-O-M on it. You know, mm. but it doesn't say mom. It says Michael O'Mara. That would, I, you know, I, and, and it would be kind or of o- a casual. O'Mara Incorporated. Don't the modern valets. How about just a blue blazer with a, uh, with a striped tie? You gotta have a family crest on there, even if it's yes. a made up one. Family crest uh-huh. and shorts. <laughs> it would definitely have to be in the form of a jumpsuit so that I could uh, handle moving the equipment. You know, a jumpsuit would be, you know, uh, in the movie Pee Wee's Big Adventure? Sure. You know oh, the like jumpsuit Francis that Francis' his father wears? <laughs> right. Uh-huh. Francis' father, right. That would be fantastic. Well, Raymond, all mm. kidding aside, seriously, would you be interested in a position as Mike O'Mara's full time? Gentlemen's gentlemen. Absolutely. Uh, then I, I I will see you tomorrow evening, and we will negotiate terms. Uh, yes, we will. How would you feel about living in Mike's home? Well, there'd probably be some arrangements we would have to discuss, but that's a possibility. What What would you need from Mike? You know, I don't like to do my negotiating on the radio, but if uh, if we're you know, since we've opened this subject up, what uh... What do you need from Mike? Space. Space. So you need a room. You need a, what, like a 19-inch TV, basic cable. There would have the screen to... works great. He's got downstairs. You see, he knows. He knows my big screen. He knows it. The thing is, though, there would have to be rules. Oh, absolutely. I would. Br- I would put a TV in that uh, guest bedroom. 
but after a certain hour, you wouldn't be able to leave that bedroom. <laughs> Unless, of course, if... Well, we'd have to work on some sort of intercom system, too, or maybe just right. a bell. A bell. Actually, you could set up some ropes and uh, have a bell down to the... No, front. hold on, the that bell. Would be no, no, the rope, if we could do that. You want that would be... rope? Yeah, you, where, you just, where you just pull... Like, I pull a rope up in my bedroom, yeah, my and it rings the bell down. No, and it, and it, that's, like, that's like the Munsters. It doesn't really work like that. <laughs> but you could get a real bell, though, if you wanted to, you know, call him, you know, oh, RJ. Yeah, I'm just thinking of the layout of the house. I, I sure like the rope idea. Yeah. It would ring a <laughs> bell a down way. in his uh, uh, way. Or you down. could just go to Radio Shack and get an intercom. Mm -hmm. How simple it would that be? You press the button, it's like, you know, yeah. RJ, it's Mike here. Uh, that would be too technical, and we don't want to make too many challenges here. Oh, RJ, my computer is acting up, and I need you to have uh, take a look at it. When you when you when you come over tomorrow, will you take a look at it? Yeah, I'll take a look at it. Does it boot up okay? It boot, boots up okay, but it tends to be freezing a little bit. He's very computer savvy, which is you know today's modern gentleman's gentleman. I mean, I think that's a perfect quality. And Ray, congratulations on that hot piece of ass from Wichita you picked up on the internet. <laughs> and I do want to say hello to Cheryl. Cheryl. Uh, um, we won't talk about the history because it's not a very fond topic of the show at this time. But, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we did some work together on that uh, that site from way back then. Mm -hmm. And that's how I met her. And, uh, you know, we communicated. And my have you, um, trip last how do I year. put this delicately? Have you boned her? No. I mean, well, we talked last year was the last time we've actually communicated. Do you have phone, do you have phone sex or, or Internet sex with her? No, no, no. Just as she described, uh, you know, very friendly. Very you know, I must tell you one thing, and it is best quality. Mm. What is that? I find him to be trustworthy. Well, that's important. That's I vital. trust him. I, 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 I trust him. Well, he, even though he has occasionally let me down, I think it's I think it's a great development that Mike is finally out in the open with us. That Mike yeah. has a man slave, mm -hmm. has has a man servant, yeah. and you're meeting him now. And his name is Raymond Diaz. Raymond, I'll need you in the conservatory. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, Raymond. And hold on. Great news. Willing to teach R J. Oh, really? On the other line, huh. willing to teach R J. Hello. Hello, about Donna Mike Como Joe here. Hi, Homo Gay Joe. Guy for the oh, great Joe. Bachelor guy. <laughs> now, how great would this be? You have Homo Joe, mm -hmm. who would be a perfect valet because, listen, let's face it, queers, and I love it you can call gay guys queers now because queer eye for the straight guy. Right. Queers are, as you've seen on that television show, immaculate, neat, organized. And, you know, in his own little way, even though he's taller, I, I think, uh, Homo Joe kind of resembles the uh, Joe Millionaire Butler. There you yeah, go. That's true. But I could take I could take RJ out to uh, the Delaware outlet stores and get him dressed up so he looks fabulous, you know, for all oh. these outings and stuff. It's all coming together. There you go, RJ. Yeah. Joe, I like it. I like it. <laughs> and they know each other. <laughs> One big happy family. And, here, and then, here I could teach, then I could teach him how to cook and clean for Mike, so everything's that's perfect. That's terrific. Fantastic. Maybe do a little redecorating colors, you know, what have you. Well, that's great. All right, well, Mike, you work it out with Raymond. I will. Tomorrow night. <laughs> Joe, hold on here. Uh, Raymond, we'll, we'll see you later. That was Mike's butler, his real-life butler, yeah. Raymond Diaz. Yes, yeah, so he goes by the name of RJ. And, uh, hey, Joe, you still there? I'm still here. Hey, Joe, which of the Fab Five is your favorite? Oh, I like the queen, the, Steve, the little queen, the little Mexican queen, of course. <laughs> yeah. Now, now Joe, what's, 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 what's the deal with the black guy? The black guy was on the show, then he's not on the show, and he's mad at the show? Uh, I don't know. I'm just trying to follow that. I think that he might have the issues with money and fame and all that kind of stuff, you know? He didn't fit in just they, they bounced him after the first two episodes, and now yeah, he wants exactly. to go. Yeah. Hey, Joe, yeah. Joe, see if you can guess the one that I really dislike. Uh, the blonde uh, with the frou-frou hair. Yes. I mean, he's the star, though. That's <laughs> funny. And it's, yep. it's not that he's gay. He's annoying. He, <laughs> right, exactly. I'd, I'd hate him if he was straight. I like the guy all, with the jet black hair. All my, all my gay, uh, straight friends say the same thing. They hate him. They said, what's up with him? I said, he's a typical homosexual that wants to take control. <laughs> <laughs> Frida was uh, watching one of them last night, a rerun, maybe the first or the second one, where uh -huh. they just got some Goomba. And they took this poor Goomba out, and they and, and you know they were fixing his hair, and and they had he was changing his clothes, and while he's changing his clothes, the blonde guy says, "If you need any help, I'll be glad to come in there and see if you know if you want me to help you fly into those trousers." <laughs> okay, that's over the that's over the that's, yeah. uh, that that's too queer. Yeah. <laughs> I would even put a bag over his head. That's how bad it is. Really? Uh huh. Uh, Joe, in in, in your world. 
in the anal world, uh, Queer Eye for the Straight Guy has to be a big hit. How do, how do you gays feel about the, the term queer now? Is that okay? It's okay. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. And I also like the show that Bravo was very uh, adamant in doing the boy meets boy. That was quite well. I didn't like the straight twist to it. I thought it was a little bit bad for the guy, but you know, for James. But otherwise, I think it turned out well. And how's your love life going, Joe? It sucks, but you know, because well, I live we all the, know that <laughs> it, it's because I'm living out in the suburbs. I'm not really readily accessible, like by subway. You like living in the city, like I was before. Um, mm. You have to drive now. You know. Oh, so when's the last time you met a, a young illegal Puerto Rican lad? <laughs> <laughs> so that would be that, that would be after Memorial Day. After Memorial Day, who's the last pick up men at those suburban strip malls? Who's the last piece of ash you had, Joe? Oh, it's been a while. It's been a while. How long? Uh, I'd say three months. Wow. wow. And what yeah. was his What was his name? Uh, that was Raphael. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and what what happened to Raphael? Well, he's in New Jersey, and uh, I met him at the beach, and uh, we kind of went back to my place and had fun, you know. Oh, beach yeah. blanket bingo. Yeah, Bing, yeah bingo. <laughs> but you know, other day. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> poor people. He what did I say? <laughs> All right, Joe. You we are flashed back to yesterday's program. <laughs> uh, no, I tell you, I tell, I'll just die when I just say that. But yeah, the poor half is I, I know that feeling. So you enjoy <laughs> the Dr. Capers segment? Yes, he, he's very flamboyant. Yes. Do you think? <laughs> you know, very, yes. I'll use the word now. Do you think he's queer? Oh, absolutely. There you go. He is the biggest flame. I hate no. Very good. <laughs> I went to his website that I had to verify he was gay. So it's like, yeah, flag it if yeah. He said. He probably wears his tiny hose upside down, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joseph. Well, uh, listen, when we get this thing with Raymond together, we'll get you involved. And also, you know, I, I just don't think the time is right yet for our oh, parody okay. of Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. I just don't think it's popular enough yet mm -hmm. with everybody. Right. But it's getting close to that point where we can do something with it. Well, that's great. I'm, I'm always available. You know I love you guys and love the show. And I'm so glad that Baltimore picked you up because I live in the 105 area now, you know. Well, 1057. No, no. That's going to be gone very soon. Well, you know, I still could pick up 106. You know, yeah. I just sit in the parking lot and wait until in, in the, on one of the 95 areas to, to show everyone. Get a booster. You know, I'd <laughs> still like to do something with Fez, too. Do you know Fez? I've seen him on the uh, Internet. I've uh, not met him in person. Uh -huh. The Internet doesn't do him justice. No. Not, not at all. Really do. Okay. Doesn't do him justice now. Joe, well, I guess that's what we're thinking. Maybe the the straight eye for the for the queer guy. Yeah. But how about if we had you know a queer guy along with a straight guy? But he doesn't want to. Be, he wants to dress up as Teddy Roosevelt and. Uh, oh, jeez. Oh, Un unallowable. Yeah. All right, Joseph. Well, well okay. good luck. Good luck. Take it easy, boys. Good to talk to you. Happy buttocks. Bye bye. Oh, bye bye. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye bye. Bye bye. There he is. There it's, come, he is. it's come a Joe. Homosexual Joe. <laughs> Making vegetables for your Campbell soup. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. That's what he does. He owns a farm. That, that's very farm. true. Right. And uh, we like saying that because uh, for those of you people who who really do hate homos, think about that the next time you're having some cream of mushroom soup. <laughs> <laughs> think about it. Like it's a queer making your food. There you go. Enjoy. Bon appetit. A queer. <laughs> God. And why is it that all of a sudden words become okay? Because that's the way life goes. Queer. Constantly in a state of flux. Gays. Hey, you big queer. Yeah. using it. Yeah. Are you okay with that? Well, didn't Homer say that's our word? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. That's our word that we use for making fun of you, queer. <laughs> All right. Well, this has been an exciting segment. We met Mike's butler. Yes, and uh, I thought the interview process was, went very well. Yeah. We talked to homosexual Joseph, 451. Uh, WJFK Live 105.7 uh, uh, Baltimore, 96 Rock, Ocean City, everywhere else, maybe for the last day. It's 9 till 5. We'll be right back on JFK. WJFK. First of all, right, if you're the newcomer, right, I want to s*** my s*** and jump. What they call toss the salad. That's the slang word, toss the salad. It means s*** my Right? With jelly or without jelly, some people use syrup. I prefer a guy to use jelly, right? I will reach my right? I will automatically get right? I will, you know, automatically. If he my for about 10 minutes or longer, right? It's, 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 a, it's a sensation film. It makes you feel real good. Most all gays do that. You know what I'm saying? Like guys, it's just like a right? But the only difference is it's not a right? It's clean. The person is decent, and the person knows that that's a but in mind, he's looking at it as a because he's in prison. So, toss my
my salad. Let him, you know, we straight. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. WJFK. <laughs> We will never speak of this again. The Don and Mike Show. Uh, this is on tomorrow's show. We'll play a game. I'm not sure yet what game we'll play, but we're giving giving away ringside tickets and a meet and greet with your favorite WWE wrestler. Monday Night Raw, MCI Center, Monday, September 22. Catch all the action, excitement of WWE with 25 of your favorite WWE superstars. That's on uh, tomorrow's episode. All right. Now, um, we'll have a chance uh, for you guys listening to win uh, $100 here in uh, just a, a couple of seconds. At 503 on uh, 1067, 1057, 959. It's Washington, Baltimore, Ocean City. Um, we do have a limited time here in this break, and it's a good opportunity to read some of our jail mail. Based on that tape you played a moment ago, prison anyone? <laughs> Lost my salad tape. Um, we have a couple of different letters from a couple of different inmates. Various levels of security. Yeah, uh, and we got the call from the guy last hour when we were saying goodbye to uh, some of our network stations. The guy was saying goodbye to us. He was going for attempted murder. Attempted murder, and he hadn't been sentenced yet. The first one that I get, uh, the review comes from Jessup, Maryland. And, it, and I opened this one with anticipation moments ago. Mm -hmm. This is the guy who's writing the story about Joe. Very good. And understand my disappointment when it wasn't a story about Joe. Oh, oh so he's moved on to another. No, no, no. Just an update. Oh. Dear Don and Mike, hey, you bastards. Don, I never really agreed with you about Drew Barrymore. That is until I saw the enclosed photo from GQ magazine. I hate to say it, you were right. Part three of Joe's story soon to come. Uh. Your friend, David Xavier, prisoner number 215-529, Jessup, Maryland. And they have a picture of Drew Barrymore in there. And <laughs> I haven't seen this. Here one. she is from GQ looking just as sloppy and as, as sweaty and... Uh, yeah, there she is. I could wash her. And smelly. Yeah, you got the uh, steam and undies for her, don't well, you? Well, I haven't seen this picture, but yeah, I did. Well, Buzz, you could, you could wash her. I will guarantee you, bring this, uh, Rob, bring this over to Buzz. He will he will be turned on by that picture. Think I'll change my mind, or you think I'll no. be excited by it? No, I think you. Uh, I think you'll get into it. Okay. She's gross. I don't. She doesn't do it for me. We've always said that she's just a dirty birdie, and we don't mean like she's. Well, I'm sure she does do everything in bed. Oh yeah, I like this. <laughs> I knew he would. Hello. <laughs> yeah. He likes that. Yeah, she's just uh, there in a I row. Can stir that coffee. And now, now, uh, <laughs> I, I believe uh, some disturbing ones. Really? Mm hmm <laughs> Some of the maximum security penitentiaries? Yeah, this this is one that comes from um, Smyrna, Delaware. Mm -hmm. Or is it Smyrna, Del I think Delaware? Smyrna. Yeah. Uh, it's a pretty name. Guy's name is uh, Daniel Cousins. And as you can see on his prison mail, he's drawn a wonderful picture of a naked lady on the bottom of the page. Would that be, ah. a, would that be a naked uh, dwarf? No, I, I think that that's just... The arms look a little elfin-like. Ran around, uh, no, around it, the room. It's because it's she's... she's Perspective, okay. What she's doing, she's presenting. <laughs> if she's, present, she's presenting her bosom. Uh, dear Donna Mike. <laughs> Sorry, Picasso. <laughs> first, Mike, let me say, here's a lady for you. For you! So that's, that's so he drew the lady for me? That's what it says. Isn't that sweet? That's nice. Right. I listen to your show every day. Since I listen, a great deal of others who frequent my place get tuned on to your show. Don, Mike, Rob, and Buzz are dearly cared for here. I am writing for two reasons. The first is a group of us have a recommendation for a prison book club. The book we are currently reading is by an author named Terry Goodkind and is the first in a fantasy series. Its title is... Wizard's First Rule. There's an excerpt where a wizard named Zed uses magic to steal a guy's D because they want to kill Zed. Hmm. There are other great parts, but I'll leave it to you to choose. The second subject of this correspondence is that I'm hoping you might air my name and information. Some of the lovely ladies who listen and enjoy the sophisticated humor of your show <laughs> might write to me. Okay, I will settle for any lady who will write and not use a crayon or misspell their name. My name is Daniel Cousins, number 425626. I'm housed at Delaware Correctional Center in Smyrna, Smyrna, I'm trying to get that right, Delaware. I'm 33, a white male, 5'11", 180, brown hair and beard. 
The guys here have nicknamed me Jesus, as they say I resemble the Anglo-Saxon Christ. Oh. We love your show. Devotedly, Daniel Cousins. Well, I don't think there's anything all that overtly disturbing in that letter. <laughs> Except for the picture. Hey, you know what? He's a horny guy behind bars. That is, that's what it sounds Seems like. He's only natural. Nothing wrong with that. From Baltimore, Maryland. Ah. And, of course, we know that these are real because there's always the stamp on the back that says, mm -hmm. this letter was sent by an inmate who is in state prison. The state is not responsible for debts incurred or the contents of the letter. Ah. And this is one that you would think maybe they would take a look at before they sent. <laughs> oh, really? Just let me go to the third page. And uh, please notice now, I'm not going to touch uh, this. Uh, it's signed Satan. And he's drawn a star, and there appears to be some blood and or fecal contaminants oh, dear. around the oh, evil star. That's a step up from a star. That's what's known as a pentagram. That's a pentagram. A pointing rod. downward? Uh, Pentagram. That is uh, no, creepy. It's, it's, yeah, it's pointing up, Buzz. Ah, well. and, uh, there's two sixes there. I guess. Have you uh, had a chance to look at this letter yet? Or No. No, that, you know, I don't pre-read them. I know you don't, and I was just wondering with this one. I wonder what he has to say. Well, let's find out. Oh, boy, here we go. Oh, dear, dear Don and Mike. Oh, boy. Dear Don and Mike, co-conspirators <laughs> from Satan. <laughs> yo, 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 Don and Mike. This is the one and only Satan. I've temporarily taken over the body of a jail-ridden loser in order to contact you. First, I want to tell Buzz he's the greatest. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I'll have a place for you, Buzz. <laughs> I'll bet. All the pot and common whores you can devour. Mm. Keep ticking, but when you know you're ready to come home, know you have a palatial mansion with 40 virgins in it. Hey, Robito, wow. I've got a special message for you. Uh. Hey, it's me, Adolf. Don't worry, Sacramento is next on the list for extermination. It will soon look like Baltimore. We will build walls around Sacramento and build a giant excremental statue. Jeez. So that you'll have infinite blessings for your undying support in our fight. How does a guy like this end up in jail? <laughs> I can't imagine. Hello. This is Mitch. Don and Mike, how are you? Stop. This is Satan again. I want you to know that there are many bad people in jail. Yeah. Defense. There are many bad people in the world. Among them, Uday, Kusay, Saddam, Osama, and the Mrs. Iraq Goat Milk 2001 winner. I have given Uday the job of eternally licking my D and Bs, and my Bs stink. I haven't washed my salty Bs since I was in heaven banging an an angels. KY is of great use to me. And random for deep thoughts. Mm -hmm. Kusei is fun. I pulled his peanut n neck off, and I use his neck as my personal S-box. Saddam is hung by his bees with kite string and loves to be spanked with celery stalks. <laughs> when I bust out the industrial size warehouse hamster, he goes nuts. He loves getting that hot hamster. Oh, my. Osama is the freak, though. He loves it when I dress Bob Hope in a burqa and have Bob's shriveled prune flavor <laughs> nuts bang on his chin. He also loves getting anal with a scud missile. I built a small village in his anal crevice. God damn. Hi, Don and Mike. It's me again. You have a great show. Shut up. Satan here. <laughs> All this human body that I am now does is uh, bait. We can't say uh, the word J. Right, right. He just floated a hot load on his pillow. Oh, dear. His celly, I guess that's cellmate, his celly is at work, so no need to get up and clean it when we could laugh at it later when dude rubs his face in it. Let me get to my point as it is. <laughs> I will make the great Don and Mike broadcast on the air for you as long as you would like. I will do this for your listeners under one condition. 
Buzz must talk sexy to me with music in the back. Oh, oh, oh I don't lucky know you. Oh, spank Satan, you dirty whore of a newscaster. <laughs> Give me the old business. Give me the business old school style. Oh, man. Take me for a loop, Buzzmeister. I will keep in touch if you would like. I will put a special Satan insignia. Sorry about that. Insignia at the bottom of this page so you will know it is the real Satan next time. Keep up the hellishly good work on Earth. Good day, I said. Good day. And then there's the special signature that has the blood or feces. And and then it says, William Appleton. <laughs> it made number 342-230. Date of birth, 1978. Wow. Hey, guys, if you'd like to give me a shout-out, I would love it. <laughs> you can say it any time and keep it separate from the Satan stuff. Just out of nowhere, say, what's up, Apple, or something. I hope you dig my letter. If you do, let me know. I'm creative, I think. I can come up with hundreds of bits for your show. I plan on pursuing a career in writing comedy or radio. Huh? I'm also currently working on, on a porn thing. I love y'all. Keep up the awesome job. Apple, a.k.a. William Apple. Apple. P.S. This is not the reason I'm sending you this. Hmm. But if you deem it appropriate, could you ask any chicks who dig Marilyn Manson to write me? Oh, I'm young, and I look decent. I will send pics if they do the same. Oh, man. Thanks. You are my radio gods. Don't announce it if you think I'm only writing to get my name and S on the air. I will be okay with that, even though I don't have a choice. Well, that's all the time we have today. Well, that was a fine edition of Prison Mail. That's all the time we have today. And, of course, we encourage all incarcerated individuals to take pen to paper and drop us a line. It's real easy. And actually, one of the envelopes here uh, it just said, Don and Mike, USA. And it made us, the guy wow. in... Uh, Smyrna, Delaware. Smyrna, Delaware. Just put Don and Mike on an envelope. Don and Mike, USA. Very and, good. And it actually made its way to us. So now that we're encouraging inmates to call and, and to write, but if you do, we take the calls. We we we, we read the letters. I mean, what the hell? Yeah. Remind me to stay out of jail. Yeah, what that's. Uh, and I'll tell you that that that's a that's an interesting. I'm, I'm going to learn to read. That we're last one. He likes you, Buzz. <laughs> yeah. You're here and you're there. <laughs> and uh, the tone of that letter was was was. Uh, quite quite menacing for the first three pages, and then all of a sudden, and and you know the dual personality also. Yes, with personalities, he's like, "Hi, Don and Mike," and then "Shut up, you." And yeah. and then at the end, hey, it's just the Apple guy. What a relief that it's was. Just the Apple guy. Hi, Apple. Okay, who wants to win a hundred dollars? I do. I We're going to play a simple. I do. Game. We're going to play a very simple it's game right now. Which is really not so simple. As his alter ego of Dolores. Now, we love doing this bit. The minds of both sex guys. Calling phone horse. Fun with Don and Mike and all round eyes. All right, a quarter after five on WJFK and Live 105 and 96 Rock. Here's the deal. You call us at 877-365-3636. We will call... Well, let me see the numbers that we've got on file here. <laughs> Can uh, you repeat them? Yeah, I'm looking for them right now. Carry them with me always. I know one of them is like hotjugs.com. Do you still have dairy pillows? Dairypillows.com. The foot hotline? Yeah, that one's... I a... love feet. Hold on, where is it? For God's sakes. Oh, here we go. Hot, cheap sex talk. Transvestites. F my feet. <laughs> Real she males. Dairy pillows. Transvestites. And... Real, hot, cheap, sex, nasty talk. Very good. A lot of them seem derivatives of the others, but here's the deal. You call us up now at 877-365-3636. We'll meet you. We'll see if, you, if you've got the stuff. Here's the challenge. you got to stay on the phone with the phone whore for five minutes. Mm -hmm. And you have to convince the phone whore. This, this contest will only work with guys. Your name is Alan Leinwand. <laughs> You're an executive at WJFK Radio. And you're a woman trapped in a man's body. You want to cut your penis off. You want to have sex with men. And your name is Alan Linewatt. Very good. That's and if you can do it and keep the girl on the phone for five minutes, then you... 
you win a hundred dollars. It's right? that easy. Now we'll do all the stuff that we call first and get the you know, hi baby, what number would you like? And then all you then we're gonna put the egg timer down. And then all then all you do is wait for me to just give them the that old you know you're on the air stuff. Mm -hmm. And then go five minutes and uh, you know do whatever you can and uh, you remember. You know, you can't get them into the real potty talk. Correct. You right. can't do like, oh, baby, I want to do you. you. The whole point of this is you're Alan Linewand. You heard Alan on the show the other day. Uh -huh. Right. And I think that we don't need to give you any other uh, prep to get into this. No, you uh, might want to, you know, come up with a decent outfit to wear. You're Alan Linewand. You're, you're a man. You're, you're, you're a woman trapped in a man's body. Wear right. something nice. You have, you have a terrible sexual issues. Something pretty. And and you're wearing pumps and a bra. And, That's it. And... and you want to be told you're a pretty girl? Well, we'll help you with it, but right. sure, you know, you give it a shot. I think I think we have a, a listener out there that can uh, rise to the challenge. We may have done this once before, and if, if we have, too bad. It's a five eighteen. So you call now. We'll be right back. Uh, WJFK. 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 Hey, Mike. What is it now? It is really great doing these singular commercials. Don, Mike, my favorite part is when you tell people to call one eight six six singular. Not me, Mike. No. My favorite part is when you talk about great calling plans, like Diaz talk. <laughs> right, Don. Family Talk allows you to add a line to your existing calling plan for just nine ninety nine per line per month, Don. But Mike. Yes, Don. You're forgetting that Singular offers the R.J. Diaz rollover. <laughs> hey, R.J., rollover. Oh, thank you, my friend. That allows you to roll over your unused minutes into the next month for up to a year. Keep connected. Keep it simple. Just switch to Singular Wireless. Call Singular at one eight six six singular Log on to Singular.com or visit any Singular Wireless store in your area. Tell them Don and Mike sent you. Good job, Don. Great job, Mike. Certain restrictions apply. I guess we, you know, we at some point we, we lost our place in the coffee. I think we missed that one up. Yeah. Right, let's start that one again. Very good. You, you got to say it first, though. Good job, Mike. <laughs> good job, Don. Certain restrictions apply. <laughs> 528. <laughs> WJFK. Uh, weather for Washington, Baltimore, Ocean City. Nice. Down to 58 tonight. Sunny 70 nice. tomorrow. Nice. Except now. DC 72, Baltimore 75, on the beach in Ocean City 68. Paul, Trey says he's never been fishing before, so can he and I take turns with my fishing pole? All right. Better still, I'll let him have one of my poles, and then you can both have one. I'll just stop this tape of Andy Griffith, uh, the tape where it sounds like he wants to have sex with little boys, to ask the musical question. Wait, why don't you just turn his microphone up real loud? We can hear Buzz. Where's Buzz? I've studio. got it. Oh, his mic isn't on. Oh, it's not on. But I've I've got his room turned all the way up. We'll just wait on Buzz. Don't go get him, Charlie. Okay. Just let him. Charlie, could you go in and turn his microphone on so we can hear him race into the studio breathing heavily? <laughs> Buzz is normally back by the end of the stop set. Yeah. Oh, hi. Hi. Hi, there you go. Okay, okay. Now turn it up nice and loud. Okay. You... How's that? All right, you can leave. Fine. Okay. Is that good? Yeah, Thank okay, you. come on, get out. He's going to know because the lights are on. Get out. out. Get out. Get out. I know he'll know. I know that you know. Now we're just going to wait. Let's just wait. He's still not back. I'm worried. I hope nothing's happened. Now, in, in case you're wondering, so you just you can follow along, we're right in the middle of the tape where Andy Griffith makes it sound, the Opie, like he's going to take this other boy to bed with him. When you come back from the commercial break in, Buzz is not here. And then we're going to uh, have someone dial for transvestites as Alan. And still there's no... No buzz. Let me call up front. Gone. Call that's gone? Oh, yeah. That's right. She wouldn't be there. Reach the WJFK business <laughs> on 529. Five, yeah, 529.50. And yeah. they're gone. 50? Man, I wish I had... What's the cell phone? You know, it's one of those deals. This is a problem with today's modern society. Yeah. I've got a cell phone programmed into mine. And me too. But here, I, he oh, here he comes. <laughs> I don't know what the number is, though. Well, it doesn't matter. Now we'll hear him burst into the studio. Here he comes. Listen. Hi. <laughs> hey. Oh, my phone's ringing. Someone's calling. It's not me. I don't. Uh, I was just. I was just commenting. The only way I know your phone number is it's on speed dial on my phone. I really right. don't know your phone number. Who's calling you? Uh, I think that was my wife calling to remind me that I need to go back to the studio now. <laughs> Hi. 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 Welcome back. Anyway. 
Wow, are we back from commercials already? <laughs> Here's the uh, tape of Andy. Yes. Where, where he sounds like he wants to have sex with one of Opie's friends. Very good. Gee, thanks, Sheriff. Huh. You can let him use your pole pole, the big one. Sure. But you all got to get some sleep. I know. Why not you come in my room? Okay, Paul. Oh, no, wait a minute. You go, Trey. You stay in your own bed. Trey can sleep in your bed, Paul? Now, don't worry about it. You'll see him first thing in the morning. I'll bring him in as soon as he dozes off. <laughs> go to sleep. I hope. I hope. Night Paul. Night Paul. Oh, WJFK. And hi, buddy. Taking you on a journey that you could not take on your own. Don Geronimo and Mike O'Mara. You know, we, we we came back, we did the live commercial, mm -hmm. we, we did the weather, right. we started to play the tape where Andy sounds like he's a, you know, a, a pedophile, uh -huh. and then we look up and he's gone. He's gone. Gone, he's gone, gone, gone. gone. And uh, I hope you're doing something important. No, not really. I just, I frankly just flat lost track of time. You weren't taking a nice big BM? Nope, nope. Just uh, hanging outside talking to the guys. Ah, beautiful day. Huh? Yeah, it really is nice. You ever take a BM at work? No, not if I can avoid. I mean, no, only in an emergency would that happen. I think I've taken thousands. I've no. seen it. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. The paper. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm, I'm not exactly difficult to figure out, and I hate the fact that they have that glass office up there with the people getting their mortgages. Yeah, <laughs> and you have to walk out, and it's pretty damn obvious when you walk with a newspaper. When a man pads through the lobby with a newspaper <laughs> in his hand, where he's going? Well, you got to go in, go to the office, get the paper, then backtrack. Yes, and it's like hello, hello again. You know, usually when I have to do that, if Don's in the office, I'll make a nice big announcement about it. <laughs> uh, that's why I asked you, Buzz, because many times Mike will say to me, "I just had." A delightful yeah, BM. No, right. I don't have that satisfaction to share with you. <laughs> a delightful one. You've never gone BM at the office? I won't say never, but almost never. Maybe twice yeah, right. in the have 12 years I've worked here. Did you ever have here. diarrhea? Not at, no, at the office? Happened. Not at work. No, and it you doesn't know, happen. We've got to get to the caller for this game, but I did want to point out that yesterday... <laughs> have you had when, diarrhea at the office? Not <laughs> diarrhea today. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> what? You mean it comes out another way? You know, you're a little <laughs> move, you're a little move last week, uh... I got a lot of feedback on that from people. The what fart? Yeah, a lot of people that were 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 jacked about that. They 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 laughed at that. They it was, had to uh, wipe. Yeah. You know, you were you were blazing a trail, so to speak. <laughs> Buzz, yeah. Yes. When you yesterday took your shirt off and uh -huh. put on a bra yes. at the end of the show, yes. Did you have underpants on? No. See, doesn't that make it even worse now? It disturbs me. The, the only thing sexier than panties and a bra is bra with no panties. Oh. That makes you like bizarro man because you're wearing a bra and no underwear. But I'm normal any other time. Oh. All right, let's get to the call. Here we go. Robin. Except not Ruth Rabe. Uh, it's going to be one of you guys. Messing with the minds of phone sex. On 1067 Washington. 1057 Baltimore, 959 Ocean City. Maybe our swan song on the network today. We covered yeah. that earlier. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's go with. Uh, we got to have a guy. Let's go with. Uh, I'll toss out names. You tell me what you like, Mike. Very good. David. Mm. Paul. Mm -mm. Aaron. Mm. Ron. Or Jeff? Aaron. Aaron. <laughs> Hello, Aaron. <laughs> Aaron. Hello. Hello, oh, Aaron. I'm sorry. No, I'm terribly sorry. No. It disqualified immediately. Let's go to my choice, Ron. Ron. Buddy. Hi, Ron. There you go. Now, Ron. Hey, how you doing? Ron, you're listening on 1067? And that's the only station to listen to. And we do thank you for that. Now, it's, uh, now look at this. They've taken the time. You're on a landline. You're not on a cell phone. So, Roger that. So here's the deal. We're going to call the phone whore line. Rob wants to disqualify him on Roger Ron. that. Because he said Roger, Roger that. Ah, oh, come on, Rob. <laughs> now, we're going to call the call him up. We'll get the whore on the phone. Here's the setup. Uh -huh. Your name is Alan Linewand. You work, you work for CBS. Roger that. You are a woman <laughs> trapped in a man's body. And, and, and you have to be wearing some sort of woman's outfit. <laughs> and, you know, now that I think about it, we don't have the technology to talk to him and not her. So we're not going to be able to give you any prompts You're going to be all. on your own, and you've got to keep it moving and talk about, uh, you know, you know you're, why you want to be a, a woman so bad. Your fascination with Barbie dolls. You and, are, and maybe describe what you're wearing in detail, like a nice gown or, you know, a dress. And, you know, say that you love Hello Kitty and that uh, you let you like queer eye for the straight guy. And, and mainly get the phone whore to say, Alan, 
You're a pretty girl. Yes. That's the most important part. Have the phone whore tell you, you know, you're a pretty girl. You think you're up All to right. are you up to the challenge? I can do it. All right, hold on now. Um, oh, don't say anything until you hear me say Wasn't that a movie? You're on the air. Hold on. And the line we've uh, selected it'll come up at random. Let's see how this guy does. I think we've given him a Wonderful little briefing as to how to accomplish this task. I think he's he up to it. He wins a hundred bucks. Oh, hi, baby. Hi, baby. You've reached one nine hundred two five eight four. Okay, well that's the number. That's one nine hundred two five eight four. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Mm, I've been waiting for your call. Oh. Yeah. I'm so hot, wet, and horny. Yeah. I could just explode. Wow. Ooh, are you ready to have your every desire fulfilled? Yes. Me. All your wildest fantasies come true. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah mm. Then hold on, baby. Uh -oh. In for one hell of a ride. Yeah, right, baby. Wow. Uh -huh. Four ninety nine per minute. You <laughs> must be eighteen. Sponsored by FK Enterprises. You're fat. Brought by FK Enterprises. Yeah. Yeah. What happened to the UC Enterprises? Four nine. <laughs> Billing will begin three seconds. After All right, three. come on. No. Each call has an access fee of five ninety nine. Charge us. Please be aware that your call may be monitored for quality purposes. For quality purposes. Please. What was that? You're on. You're on. Oh. Okay, uh, what was your name again? Alonzo. Alonzo, uh, it's 0781. Thank you, sir. Okay, I will now be connecting you to one of my friends. Now have fun. Thanks, dude. That's a mood killer. Yeah, kind now of. I gotta tell the next lady to Press right? one to go one on one with a sexy oh. girl. Press one, here we go. Remember to get back to the main menu. Hi, baby. Alright, now remember, Alan, are you still there? No, oh, Ron. Ron. Hi, baby. Once I, once I say he's on the air, they're on the air. He's on his own. Hello? John and Mike, you're on the air. Hello? Hello? Hey, how you doing? Fine. How are you? What's your name? My name's Amy. Oh, wow. My name's Alan Lime One. Hey, Alan. What's <laughs> cooking, dude? I'm a very, very powerful person. I work at CBS. Okay. I'm in charge of lots of people. You are. What is he doing with I am. Well, guess what? You can What's that? You did, could be in charge of me any day. Did he have that when he was on no. the phone? Yeah. Yeah. But you know what, though? I, I, don't, I don't feel like a dude. I really feel, I feel, I feel silky. I feel feminine. Oh, hey. Then hey. Hey, girlfriend. Then I feel you could take care of me. <laughs> I feel. Can you make me feel pretty? What was your name again? Amy. Can you make me feel pretty? Oh, yes, I can. What accent is he doing? I hate it. All right. All right. Killing me. Thing. Hold on. You can do what? All kinds of stuff. Can you tell me that I'm pretty? Can you tell me that, that, that can you say, Alan, like you're a pretty person? God. Mm -hmm. Hang up on that guy. I want to go one on one with a sexy girl. Hi, Donna Mike. Who's this? Nine per minute. To join the 24-hour orgy. Party. Hello, Don and Mike. Who's this? Yeah. Paul. Oh, Paul, you want to try it? Sure. All right. Good luck. What a southern accent. After I say you're on the air, okay? Three nine nine. Then you jump in. Gotcha. Listen. Remember to get back to the main menu. You can press star. You're pulling out of that one. Time. Here we go. Now you got to wait for the you're on the air thing. Hi, baby. <laughs> that Subex, that last four was a real good dumb one too. Hello. <laughs> Don and Mike, you're on the air. Hello. Hi, baby. What's your name? There we go. Hi, baby. This is more like it. Angela. What's your name? Angela. Angela. That's a nice name. Uh, thank you. What's My, your name? Alan Linewall. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Alan Linewall. <laughs> yeah. And what's your first name? Who's back there laughing? Oh, come on. My friend, I'm sorry. I have the TV up. Yeah. Can you hear me? Right. No, I do. I'm watching a movie. Thinking it's you. I think, I think when we laugh loud, yeah, it bleeds know. over. It bleeds through. Think it's I'm sorry, let me turn down the TV. What? I say you don't even know how I look, so how are you thinking about it? Well, I'm just picturing. Where are yeah. you calling me from? I'm calling from uh, Virginia. Uh-oh. Yeah, but... I, I work for CBS. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm in Colorado. Oh. Uh, yeah. I'm on drugs. What's going on over there? Can you hear Not much. Um, I'm, I'm feeling very pretty today. Can you tell me that I'm a pretty boy, pretty girl? Do you have on? I'm wearing a nice, very short skirt, thigh-high boots. 
Press one to go one on one. Got to find someone else girl. for this guy. Only We're going to stay oh, with him? No, I hung up on him, too. He ate and six him. I found him to be ill-equipped for the job. David. Press three to speak live with other hot callers. Hello. Only three ninety nine. Davey. Hello, Nate. Uncensored adult tales. Oh. Hey, Nate, are you there? Yes, I am. Are you up for the task? I am up for it. All right. Are you gay, Nate? Am I gay? Yeah. Well, it's been a long time since I've had sex, but I don't think I've crossed over yet. Very good. All right, here we go. A little gay. Press one to go one on one. there's anything wrong with that. Only four ninety nine per minute to join the 20... Hey, you got to let me do the you're on the air thing. Please press yes. two. I'll try not to four laugh loud. Per minute. Every time I hear that press name. Press three to speak live with <laughs> other hot more. callers. Oh. Remember to get back to the main menu. You can press star. Now just remember, you're Alan Lime One. <laughs> After this, put, put that button back. Hello. Don and Mike, you're on the air. Hello. Hi. Who is this? Huh? Who is this? This Katie. Hi, Katie. This is Alan Limewad. Oh, uh, nice to meet you, Alan. Oh, it's nice to meet you, too. Oh, uh, where are you calling me from? Oh, I'm calling you from Virginia. Ira. Just outside of D.C. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Wow. I'm just sitting at my office here and uh, thinking about, God. you know, changing into my skirt and everything. He's nervous. Because sometimes okay. I... You know, I just feel like I'm not really a man sometimes. That sounds like a real phone sex guy, doesn't he? <laughs> He's breathing awful heavy. I think it's the yeah. nerves. Well, Hope so. Wow. So when, so when everybody else has left the office for the day, I tend to sit back in my nice big leather chair, put on some high heels and a skirt. <laughs> oh, yeah. And find the sexiest thongs I can find and wear them around the office. Oh, yeah. It feels so, feels so good. So I feel so free when I do that. <laughs> He's good. I feel like I'm really me then. He's getting into it now. He's relaxing. Yeah. Do you think I I sound hot when I do that? <laughs> oh, you do sound hot. Oh yeah. Hi, baby. Oh yeah. Sometimes I just feel like I don't even want this penis of mine anymore. I just, <laughs> just want to have sex with men. If only he would just say his name was Alan Line one again. He'd really be hitting a home run. Like a man and a woman has. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, you want to get Santa Trey Oh, that, oh, that would Jenna be Bush. So great. Oh. Yeah? Yeah. Tell her your name. My name's Alan Lywan. <laughs> Just tell me. Huh? My name's Alan. <laughs> And sometimes I just, I feel pretty. Do you think I'm pretty? Yeah, I think you're pretty boy. Oh, I don't want to be a pretty boy. I want to be a pretty girl. Okay, now. I want to be a pretty little girl. I want to be a pretty girl. I want to be, I want to, I want you to say that. Alan, you're a pretty girl. <laughs> Alan, you're a pretty girl. Okay, now he's winning. Oh, that's one. That's already happy. won. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh. You have long hair. What color is your hair? Oh, I have dirty blonde hair, and it's, it's quite long. Oh, yeah. But in a manageable way. <laughs> it's smooth, because I rinse and repeat. Oh, I rinse and repeat. Oh, I am a pretty little girl. I'm a bad little girl, too. I like being a pretty bad little girl. <laughs> Yeah. He's getting into it now. Pretty little girl. Oh, yeah. You are one pretty girl. Oh, that's... Oh. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, no, no. Girl. Oh, yeah. Oh. You know that you're a pretty girl? What? Hey, don't you know that you're a pretty girl? <laughs> no one ever tells me that. No one tells you that? I see all these people around the office, and there's, I have my eye on a couple of them. Uh, I wish I could just come out and tell them, and I wish they would just accept me and just be like, Alan, Alan, you're such a pretty girl. But I, I don't think they'd accept me like that, and it hurts sometimes. But you saying it makes it so much better. Oh. Pretty little girl. Pretty oh, yeah. little girl, Alan. Pretty little girl, Alan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you sound.
sound like a pretty girl, too. Oh, yeah, I am. <laughs> You're probably a prettier girl than me, though. <laughs> I think we're both pretty. I think we're both pretty. pretty. Yeah. <laughs> what color's your pumps, baby? My pumps? They're purple. These they're nice. Purple pumps. Like oh, it's pumps. Oh. I like to be a little flashy sometimes. <laughs> they're purple what? They're purple pumps. I like to be flashy. Oh, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes on the weekends I, I come in and <laughs> I dress up. Full makeup and everything, and I have a nice big white bow that I wear around the office. <laughs> and I go into some of the offices and I just role play. Thirty seconds, he's, and he wins. And like, role play. I'm, I'm producing my boss. He's great. And, he, and I'm just waiting for one day he, he call me again and be like, Alan Lywald, you're such a pretty girl. <laughs> I don't think he'll ever say that to me. Twenty seconds. Yeah, thanks. No, I. But if he ever did. Oh, that would be so great. Uh, uh, I'd just jump right on his DMB so fast. Five seconds. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because I love men. <laughs> yeah. There it is. And we've got you. You guys great. You rock. We've got a winner. My Fantastic. Oh, he's still into it. Hey, uh, uh, who's this? Is this uh, Nate? I think the people at CBS, you know. Hey, like that. hey Nate. Hey, uh, Eb. Uh, what are you doing on this phone, young man? Get off the phone. Oh, 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 oh my God, I'm sorry. Are you talking to a phone whore again? Oh, 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 crap, Dad, I'm sorry. Alan Linewand, you're in big trouble. Are you dressing like a queer again? Oh, uh, no, of course not. <laughs> Who is this on the telephone? Answer me now. This is Alan Linewand. You whore. What is your name, whore? Hello, whore? I believe she's gone. She's going, and you, my friend, you kill. Great That's job. That's fantastic. Thank Unbelievable. you. Thank Great you. job, Nate. Thank you. And Nate, <laughs> some might say you played that part a little too well. Yes, I believe the rinse and repeat was the one that got most of our male audience talking. <laughs> but uh, you did a great job without any prompting from us. Yeah, I, I only slipped one in there. Just say the name. Nate, congratulations. Uh, $100 for you. Awesome, awesome. And, uh, and hold on, here you go. Wait a minute, hold on. Go to a dinner also, please, at uh, Romano's Macaroni Grill. You really stepped up there, Nate. Create your own pasta. You choose the pasta, the sauce, and the mix of favorite toppings, starting from uh, seven ninety nine. That's from a Macaroni Grill. And thank you for listening. Thank you, guys. It was, it was a pleasure doing that for you all. Outstanding job. Outstanding. <laughs> Way really to go, great. Nate. Really great. Hold great on. job. Hold on, Nate. And it took a while to find the right phone horn, but boy, did we get the right mix of alcohol and pills and, and he, whatever. Uh, he started out a little shaky and then just hit his stride. Oh, yeah. Right at the point when he said rinse and repeat. Mm, yeah. You know, <laughs> funny God. I come in and role play. <laughs> yeah, with my feather boa. I work for CBS. There you go. My name is Alan Line One. <laughs> ah, that's beautiful. It's 548. WJFK. We'll be right back. WJFK. And now... Is. Man or woman, you decide. Listen, my friend, I am a supporter of the gay community. I wore a red ribbon to the Emmys. I have been to several Elton John concerts. What does that mean? Elton John is a gay. WJFK. Now, who's queer, huh? It's on in my show. Right, right. This is Scott Thompson saying Don and Mike are a gay. Drink your mead, but in moderation. No man is called discourteous who goes to bed at an early hour. Just ask Don Geronimo and Mike O'Mara. 559, 1067 Washington, 1057 Baltimore, 959 Ocean City. And everybody else who might be hearing us for the last time today. We said it earlier, we'll say it very briefly now. Thank you for listening. No hard feelings. We right. mean it. It's just the jerk faces that run this place. Um, okay, it's uh, Craig Wilson Day. Now, we didn't get to Craig Wilson last week. We got kind of a theme show going on here today, you know, with uh, little Alan Linewad is a pretty uh, girl. Right, nice, smooth segue into Craig. And, uh, you know, the, the one that we had last week out of the newspaper, we saved, right? Yeah. Because it was, it was just... It was all right. Just queer enough. Yeah. And now, you know, now that we've talked to Joe... We've got Homo Joe on the show today? Now that we've talked to Homo Joe and the whole thing with the word queer, it's okay because queer eye for the straight guy... I'm going to abuse the word totally. <laughs> it's going to it's going to replace fag. replace fag. Very I mean, good. Hey, you queer. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, you mean it only in the most loving way. Yeah, you know, like Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. Right. There you go. Uh, so Craig Wilson today in USA Today has a column that we could not have written better ourselves. Uh -huh. You can go to USA.com uh, or you can just be one of the schmucks in the airport that buys the newspaper and you know that this is not one that we're making up. It's like he's, he's answered our request. So, <laughs> without further ado, we do this every Wednesday on the show. The final word... I quite well feel Owners pay a pretty penny for their dog's thoughts. Nothing more than feeling. Driving around the farm in his old pickup truck, my uncle would politely nod while I solved all of the world's problems as only a loquacious ten-year-old can. He'd let me jabber on for hours, and then he'd always respond with his favorite phrase, If you're so smart... Why ain't you rich? Down on as much of a cliche as it was then, that remains a good question even today. And I'm afraid I still don't have an answer. I'd like to think of myself as a relatively bright fellow, but I have to confess, I'm not rich. There's hardly a day that goes by that I don't think of Uncle George, especially when I see a new and stunningly simple product and ask, now, why didn't I think of that? I asked myself that just the other day while wandering through linens and things. <laughs> Here it is. Through linens and things and came across bed risers. Those simple little cups you put underneath bed legs and college dorms to add a few inches of storage space. I have no doubt that... Millions have been sold in the past few weeks, and millions of dollars have been made by the inventor who's probably living the good life in Palm Springs right about now. <laughs> Smart and rich, unlike me. And I thought of my uncle again this week when I saw an ad for a device that allows your dog to talk to you. Another opportunity missed. Another opportunity missed, queer. He would have pointed out once he stopped laughing. Bao Lingual, a Japanese invention, entered the American market a couple of weeks ago, dubbed the Dog Translator. It sold more than 250,000 units before heading here at $120 each. It's quite simple, actually. It's quite simple, really. A radio microphone attaches to your dog's collar, and a handheld receiver translate barks into 200 different phrases. The device determines your dog's emotion at the moment. Happy, sad, frustrated, on guard, assertive, and needy. In case you have a dog that barks only in Japanese or Korean, it comes with those translations, too. Oh, great. <laughs> As popular as this new gadget is, again, I'm kicking myself here. Any dog owner with his milk bones knows this might not be all that necessary a purchase. Our dog, Murphy, for instance. Wow, I am the lucky man today. <laughs> yeah. Our dog, Murphy, for instance, has never had any problem whatsoever communicating with us. Not once in 13 years. Odd, it seems. We can figure out quite quickly what's on her mind. Just the cock of her head will often do it. Translation? Surely you're taking me with you. <laughs> Gotta reset the music. <laughs> and am I alone in thinking Murphy was a guy? Uh, I thought Murphy was a male dog. Yeah, of course. Who, na who names a girl dog Murphy? I don't know. Murphy Brown. <laughs> That's what the dog is named after. And now you're right back to the final word. <laughs> we both love Candace Bergen, Jack. Come on. Let's name her Murphy. Yeah. Murphy but, nobody, but nobody names their dog Murphy. We don't have to keep the brown on there. Feelings of love. Sometimes it's a solitary bark at the kitchen door after dinner. Translation? You forgot my treat, buster. <laughs> and sometimes it's 100 barks in a row. Translation? The mailman is here. The mailman is here. Can't you hear him attacking our house? 
but I think I witnessed the ultimate dog communication technique technique years ago. It was a neighbor's dog. I can't remember the breed or name. All I remember is how bright she was. She had no need for bilingual. Whenever frustrated with her family, which appeared to be quite often, she would stroll into the living room, turn her back to them, and sit directly in front of the TV they were watching and pee. <laughs> Wow, you just, you just like crown him. <laughs> you just you just double dump, jumped me in checkers. Mm -hmm. No translation needed. <laughs> and you need not be smart or rich to figure that out. Now listen. There we go. Wow. How fantastic was that? That was a bounty. Wow. I mean, that, that he just gave and gave and gave. Wow. Thank you, Craig. <laughs> Wonderful job. From your uncle? To, to your dog, <laughs> Uncle and things. George. To what the other... You know, and I really think that, to me, was the high point. <laughs> I was throwing through linen, linens and things. Linens and things. <laughs> la, la, la. <laughs> linens and things. And, and Murphy's a girl. Right. Wow. Murphy's, so there is a girl in that house. And I, I, you know, I'd be almost willing to wager that's Murphy Brown, but maybe we'll never know. He's and the right. dog went number one. So we had, you know, we had to run that past the censors. Oh, really? Earlier today, that it was it was okay to read it one time. Right. As long as it was evident that it was the dog that did it mm -hmm. and not Craig Wilson. Very good. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, really? That was the ruling that the sense. jerk faces came up with. I heard a rumor that he protests things the same way. <laughs> I heard a rumor, so do we. <laughs> Be careful, you're painting us with the same brush. Yes, this is true. A nice brush. Uh, now it's time for a guy, a guy bird song, and here he is. Right In a world where owning a radio was strictly forbidden, Airboats. one man found a way to bring good news to his people. There he is. He, he made it up. Bud's, uh, Bud's bird, bird bath. And yes. Buzz, <laughs> yes. what is your lead story on the news and comments oh, today? Oh, late breaking news. The Benefer wedding is off. Oh! For now. Oh! oh okay. All right. Okay. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I'm with you. Uh -huh. Okay. And, oh, and don't think that I haven't gotten your faxes. You know, yeah. a couple of days ago, I make an offhand comment that Benifer, because mm -hmm. I really was just sitting by myself and thought, yeah. oh, Ben, Jennifer. So Jennifer. you were doing what you do often, you were creating. Mm -hmm. And as, as it turns out, I, I, I guess from the uh, accounts that I've seen faxed to me, apparently uh, the National Enquirer coined that phrase uh, maybe a month and a half ago. <laughs> Great minds well, think alike. And, and I think that uh, somebody even sent in something that uh, I guess maybe Jay Leno said it like two months ago. Oh, all right. So, well, you, know, so you I can't mean, I, claim that intellectual property. No, I, I did think of it on my own, but uh, can I help it that so many great minds think alike? Well, yeah. You and Leno, you're like Siamese twins. <laughs> so anyway, the better for stuff, you know, sorry, I can't do what Craig's dog did on it, because mm -hmm. it's not really mine. That's true. Uh, Buzz. Yes. Bud. Stay yes. tuned for news and comments coming, coming up on the Don and Mike Show. 608 on 1067, 1057, 959 for today. Yeah. Oh, sad. It'll be our last hour of network radio today. Yeah. Really, it's it's sad. Mike, this has all been very... WJFK. <laughs> What's the word from Planet Crescent? W J F K. Yeah, here we are. The Don and Mike Show. Right. Listen up, you BMEs. From Washington, D.C. on WJFK. From Baltimore on Live 105. And from Ocean City on 96 Rock. You can call Don and Mike toll free at 1-877-365-3636. They're ready to believe it. This is ghetto -licious. It's the daytime Emmy Award winning Don and Mike show. All right, right, 619. Don and Mike, Washington, 1067. WJFK, Baltimore, 1057, Live 105. Ocean City, 95.9. 96 Rock. It's uh, time for Buzz's new show. Mm -hmm. Buzz brought to you by Veramax. Someone call for a doctor. Sexual pleasure, performance enhancer, doctor developed, clinically tested. Veramax works. Get it at Rite Aid, GNC, and other select retailers. Try it today. Viramax, one triple H try VMAX. V Max. Mm -hmm. uh, Redskins uh, Hall of Famer Sonny Jurgensen was asked about this product. Yes. You know what he said? What? Hot dog. Hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> Hot dog. Hot dog. Hot <laughs> dog. Someday we'll explain that to you. Sure. Hot dog. Hot dog. Hot dog. Hot dog. I don't know. Was it, was it dog or dogs? I think it was hot dog. Hot dog. Hot dog. 
Hot dog. I want a hot dog. <laughs> hot dog. I don't know, Don. <laughs> no, Alan, I don't want to be on the Don and Mike show, even though I'm contractually obligated to be on that show. Hot dog. Hot dog. Hot dog. <laughs> anyway, hot dog. Here's uh, here's Buzz uh, Buzz uh, Buzz Birdbank. <laughs> Hi, Don and Mike. Hi, Buzz. Hi. Uh, the Benefer J Fleck wedding set for this weekend has been postponed. That's the word from Entertainment Tonight, which says the 400 guests have already been notified by telephone. God. Access Hollywood might be the cause. It reported this week the day and the location. It even reported where the guests would be staying, which well, even the guests hadn't been told yet. That's I, I saw that when we were on vacation. I saw that in the tabloids. Right. The Enquirer, I think, had mm -hmm. it. That's, remember, I came back and told right. Jay Leno was on the guest list. It's because I read it in the National Enquirer. Yeah. Where, where's it going to be? Days in? <laughs> then we don't know now, unless, of course, they... Hold it this weekend. How about if it's in her bung? <laughs> yeah, all the all the wedding party, the cake, room plenty room. of room in there. Four hundred champagne people. fountain. I heard it was going to be a small wedding, so I doubt it. Hot dog, <laughs> hot dog, <laughs> hot dog. <laughs> and now some kinky Hollywood sex news. Maybe you heard us talk about Liz Taylor's gardener suing because he was fired. Is that the man that like trims her place? <laughs> well, you know, maybe. Okay. Uh, I believe she's probably bald down there. <laughs> you always think that. And you think it's it due, to, due to wear and tear? Age. She's an old broad, Elizabeth Taylor. I don't know. Do women lose their hair down there? I don't think so. Well, I bet she has. I hope not. <laughs> I bet she has. Well, the gardener says he was fired because he refused to have... <laughs> I bet it's not an even smooth either. <laughs> it's like your face, a, a guy's face after four or five days. Stumbling. I bet it's like Rob. Like Rob, a lot of holes in the desert. Like Rob's beard. <laughs> I bet it's falling out, but in patches. Oh, God, patches. There's patches again. Yeah. There's that word. Hot dog. <laughs> Hot dog. Hot dog. Well, Liz Taylor's gardener says he was fired because he refused to have sex with the butler. He says the butler came on to him. Hey, the butler, R.J. Diaz. Yeah, R.J. wouldn't have refused to have sex with anybody. <laughs> gardener says uh, the butler came on to him after the butler complained that he's being forced to have sex with Liz, or as he put it, the old trampoline. <laughs> the gardener. The gardener. The butler gardener. supposedly said he found Liz so unappealing he had to take Viagra just to make this possible. Uh, but the butler, whose name is, by the way, Jean-Luc, May have tape recorded that conversation and many others with en the help. Engage. Liz. You know what would turn me on? <laughs> Number one. <laughs> <laughs> well, those tapes, those audio tapes, may come into play in the lawsuit in a way that is also embarrassing for the lady of the house. That's the latest scuttlebutt from the National Enquirer. Congratulations. This is Max Bear Jr., Jethro Bodine from the Beverly Hillbillies, and you just won the. CBS Celebrity Burp Contest. Un unannounced at that time. La, la, la. There was not, there was, you know, once a week we try to work that tape in. You got it in the middle of the week. Very no, rare. Normally during the news, and I normally try to give it a setup. That, but, right. But it's a giveaway if I say, you know, here's tape of Liz Taylor, because we never had a tape of Liz Taylor. Of course yeah, not. Time it was just, there he is. <laughs> Jethro. <laughs> Kamikaze attack there. Just boom. <laughs> well, after, after years of... I know that this is an old joke, yeah? but I just heard it recently. What? I'm one of those Comedy Central junk things you watch when there's nothing else on. Right. It made me laugh out loud. Why did all the Japanese kamikaze pilots wear helmets? Why? No, that's the joke. It's a thinking man's oh, joke. Oh, right, right. I get it. The kamikaze oh, pilots. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> they're going to kill themselves anyway. Why wear helmets? Right. Right. Oh, yeah. No. See, like I said, thinking man's joke. Yes. You laughed out loud at that. I did. Had you had any martinis? No. Oh, very good. No. <laughs> Absolutely stone he, he sober. thinking. Just went uh, out. Uh, 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 hot dog. Hot dog. Hot dog. After years of fighting, <laughs> Simon and Garfunkel are getting back together for a concert tour. Okay, everybody repeat after me. Big. Big. Effing. Effing. Deal. Deal. They've reserved dates and venues around the country, he forged ahead, 30 years after breaking up the act. And quoting one music magazine editor, you never know when Artie and Paul will get into a fight and call the whole thing off. But for now, they're scheduled to appear here in Washington and over a dozen other big cities between now and Christmas. He had to get, get back into the music business after his department store went belly up. That was Garfunkel's. Finkel's. Garfinkel's? That was my little joke. I the, knew it was You see, right. they, didn't wear, they, they didn't have to wear helmets. <laughs> <laughs> no, why did they wear helmets? Right, but see, they didn't have to. Yeah, because they were going to blow the planes up. Right, right, that's because that, that's why the joke was funny. Hot dog. <laughs> They'll be doing their old songs without any changes. Tickets may go for $250 a piece. Wow. Yeah. Hello, is this Melwood? <laughs> <laughs> have I got a deal for you? 
Oh. See, Melwood is a place where tards live. Mm -hmm. Okay, Melissa, you can keep stripping here at the club, but only if you keep your grades up. And you see... Only a retarded person would pay $250 to see Simon and Garfunkel. Yeah, wear the helmet. <laughs> Hot dog. Hot dog. A chain of strip clubs in Canada is offering to pay its dancers college tuitions if they can maintain a grade point average of B or higher. All right. The chain just ran a full-page color ad in the student newspaper at the University of Windsor in Ontario. Where was this, Buzz? In Canada. <laughs> Quoting one school official, I'd rather see the paper advertise where you can buy Levi's at half price. I would rather this business find some other way to recruit. Where is this? Uh, this is in Canada. <laughs> that really jumps right in, doesn't it? <laughs> but recruiter Robert... Hot dog. <laughs> recruiter Robert Katzman says, A girl who wants to better herself makes for a higher-level entertainer. They're happier. They're doing something with their lives. There's nothing wrong with nude dancing if you're progressing in your life. In Canada? Buzz Birdbath taking control of that situation. <laughs> okay, hot dog. Hot he he Hot didn't dog. he didn't absolutely positively need to be there overnight, but 25 year old Charles Charles McKinley needed to fly from New York to Dallas. He boarded a 747 at JFK and you know, is this the guy in the box? Changed planes in Fort Wayne, Indiana, before flying on to Texas. But he traveled, yes, inside a crate. I mean, here's my only problem with this. I think it's a great stunt. Uh, -huh. uh I think that perhaps. What, he did this yesterday? Yeah. Which would be the ninth? Yeah, a couple of days ago, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Anyway, the publicity coming out the day before September 11th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little freaky. Not not the best when you think it is. He didn't think of it. Was that. it JetBlue? Was that the airline? No, it wasn't an airline. It was, uh, you know, an air freight company. Okay. The pilot air freight company. Okay. Uh, don't they check that? Uh, apparently not, no, Mike. They, no, they don't. He shipped himself from a warehouse in the Bronx to his parents' house via the pilot air freight company. It was at his parents' house that the delivery man noticed two eyes peeking out from between the slats in the crate. So what we're saying to any potential Uday's or Kuse's out there is, listen, no need to try to get on the plane, to, to, to hijack it, to, to, to get the fake passport and everything. No, no need to go commercial airliner, get a, right. get a, get a, a big DC-10, you know, on FedEx. Just get like a, a Roadrunner cartoon, Acme box, right. mm -hmm. pack yourself in there w with a bunch of those styrofoam peanuts. Was he trying to prove a point? No, he just wanted to get home. What an idiot. Uh, yeah, he realizes that now. He feels badly. Police immediately assumed he was a terrorist, which Chuck says made him break down and cry. Quoting him, I would advise no one to ever do this. I was so scared. I'm just a guy who really wanted to go home. I wish I'd taken a bus. Right now, I wish I'd walked. And right now, he's in jail on bad check charges. <laughs> moron. God. Yeah, but yeah, the guy's a moron, but how about the, yeah. the company? Bigger how, Yeah, the system, and, uh, the, that's, that's, that's a failed system right there. And I apologize to JetBlue. I don't know why. I, I, I were, when I was reading this, I read something about JetBlue. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe it was that they're a great airline. Yeah. That, I don't, well, they are a great been. airline, and I, I mean, I, I think they're the best. I think right now they're the best thing flying. Um, all I know, though, is that this happened... At, at an airport, wherever this guy got right. into the box right. and got loaded onto an airplane, he got in an airport where there would be other airplanes and we're supposed to have better security. And incidentally, Jeff Blue, after that last comment I made, you can send those tickets to 10800 Main Street, Fairfax, Virginia, 22030. They have the game show network. Or is it 22207? 22030. Thank you. 030 is right. 030. Attention, O'Mara. Yes. Hot dog. Hot dog. Hot, hot dog. dog. Hot dog. You see, the thing is... Bagel chips. You see, the thing is... <laughs> hot dog. It's what they have on they're the doing, Blue oh, Rob. Yeah, you see, them. they're doing the, the Redskins game. Right. And when they get done with, with the... They, they're they're going to go to break to a timeout. Mm -hmm. And as soon as they, they... Frank says, you know... And that's the score. Cowboys 31, Redskins 7. Four minutes left in the second quarter. We'll be right back on the WJFK Redskins Radio Network. When they go to the music and they take the headphones off, the first thing Sonny says is, 
Hot dog. Hot dog. <laughs> hot dog. Because, well, he's just ordering someone to bring him a hot dog. Right? <laughs> okay. Hot dog. Hot dog. First thing. You know, and that, with that great sunny kind of indifference, I'm the king of the world. Hot dog. Hot dog. Hot dog. <laughs> well, the good news, I guess, is... That's that, the story. There it is. I like that story. And we're sticking to it. It's good to be sunny. And they didn't wear the helmets. Mm-hmm. Or they, they didn't have to wear the helmets because they would just crash the plane. That is laugh out loud funny. <laughs> I thought it was. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, the good news, I guess, is that Meg Ryan gets very naked and very nasty in a new movie called In the Cut. Para-quoting the Ain't It Cool website, seeing her topless is a jolt, but watching her pleasure herself is a revelation. Ooh. Damn, that's the angry bitch. I wonder how many uh, digits she can get into her cut. <laughs> but an MSNBC <laughs> no, source... I'm, I, I'm trying to make, <laughs> what you, if she wounded herself... Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's right. Yes, if she had an open wound, if she had a sure, cut... absolutely. How many fingers could you get into that? Well, sometimes cut. to stop the bleeding, you have to use the whole hand. Yeah. Or a fist. An MSNBC source who's seen the movie at a film festival in Toronto says that's not the shocking part. Shocking. They say that perhaps because of Botox or collagen injections, her face looks odd and frozen, quote, sort of like a Halloween mask. <laughs> oh, shocking. God, that's awful. Where's the new and approved Joker product? A movie to enjoy on a couple of levels. <laughs> we got it. We got it. Now, I'm going to be fair here because I think yeah. Meg Ryan is a piece of ass. Yeah, but yeah. she's gotten kind of goofy over the years. Year, yeah. Just like Cameron Diaz. Say her name again, Buzz. Uh, the, uh, you mean uh, Meg Ryan? New and approved Joker product. Hot dog. Hot dog. Hot dog. Hot dog. The Whammo Toy Company is suing Paramount Pictures over the Dickie Roberts movie. Whammo is themed about the slip and slide scene, and either wants the scene taken out of the movie or the movie taken out of theaters at the very least, it wants a disclaimer telling people not to do what David Spade does. <laughs> what does he do? Well, he tries to slide on it with no water, and he's, you know, bare-chested, and he gets a burn Duh. from the lack of lubrication, you know, apparently. But here's the whole thing. Think about this, amp- the, the, and I had one when I was a kid, I love Whammo it. slip and slide thing. Right. What you're doing is, you, what you we try to do in your neighborhood is find the steepest hill, mm-hmm. And put this this plastic thing on the steepest hill, and get running water going down it. Right. So that you could, it, it, you know, the, the goal is to careen out of control at the end when you come off the plastic. Right. I mean, it's like jarts. It's another yes, game that we all much. played when we were kids. <laughs> jarts, but the it, most dangerous jarts. backyard game but of the it, world. In theory, slip and slide and jarts are both like in today's PC society. They're lawsuits waiting to happen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, jarts blow uh, slip and slide away, though. The, the problem know. with slip and slide is not the the game itself, but the end. And yes, especially which... if you tried to put several of them in series, mm-hmm. as often happens, there's right. disaster. No, they've fixed that. There's now an inflated bumper at the end of the slide, oh, no, so that you can't go any further. Stop anybody. That'll work. Oh, that's what? Then the goal is to break the bumper. With a jar. Uh, Whammo, which took the product off the market after a series of adult accidents, says the toy is not meant for adults. It says the toy is misused in the movie, where it's used without being inflated with air and without being coated with water. Whammo says it had to pay over $12 million to a guy in Wisconsin who was paralyzed for using the slip and slide improperly, yes, while he was drunk. Oh, shock. No. Whammo, shock. which once belonged to Mattel, also makes the Frisbee, the Hula Hoop, and the Super Bowl. Whammo. Yeah. The religion police of Saudi Arabia have labeled Barbie dolls a threat to morality. The Committee for the Propagation of Virtue and Prevention of Vice says her shapely body and sexy clothing are offensive to Islam. Quoting the committee's website, Jewish Barbie dolls... I, I didn't know she was... This is Michael Hoffman, and you're listening to Jew to Jew. The website says... Rob, you're going to have to get rid of all of Julia's Barbie dolls. <laughs> Already done. Uh-huh. The website says Jewish Barbie dolls with their revealing clothes and shameful postures. This is Michael Hoffman, and you're listening to Jew to Jew. Hello, Barbie. Are a symbol of... This is Ken. I was wondering if you might be available tonight. If uh, you uh, would like to get down off of your shelf, we could have a date <laughs> sitting on the radiator. Uh, hello, Barbie. Can hear. The blonde hair never fooled me. I know the truth. This is Michael Hoffman, and you're listening to Jew to Jew. Maybe you would enjoy sitting on the end of the bed of the child that plays with you. 
kosher hot dog. Hot dog. <laughs> oh, hey, Buzz jumping in there. So the, the, this Muslim web, website says Jewish Barbie dolls with their revealing clothes and shameful postures are a symbol of decadence to the perverted West. Saudi stores that sell the dolls are fined and the dolls are confiscated. Now there's a black market for them. This is Michael Hoffman, and you're listening to Jew to Jew. Uh, and look at this, darling, my little girl. I bought you Malibu Temple Bobby <laughs> for happy Chanukah. <laughs> Temple Bobby. Quoting one sheikh who's concerned about young girls, these revealing clothes will be imprinted in their minds and they will refuse to wear the clothes we are used to as Muslims. Also considered immoral in Saudi Arabia, by the way, Valentine's Day, perfume bottles with sensual shapes, and anything with a cross on it. Well, I'm with them on the Valentine's Day thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's kind of a just... You've been working for years to boycott that holiday. That's here. just a big thing to get guys in trouble. Yeah. Uh, Buzz, hold on. It's right. 6.35. Uh, WJFK Live uh, 1057, 96 Rock, uh, and others will be back for uh, the end when we come back. WJFK! A Jew, a Gentile, I don't know. Not sure, but a fine traffic report. Not even her real name, incidentally. 644. Uh, tonight, cloudy. I lost it, Buzz. Low is what? I lost your weather forecast. Uh, 58 tonight. And tomorrow? 78. And sunny. Uh, now DC 72, Baltimore 75, Ocean City 68. WKFK. Uh, gosh, I hate to interrupt. It's all been so incredibly fascinating and entertaining and instructive. Really, the time has just flown by. That's right. WKFK. Who's the greatest? Huh? The Don and Mike Show. They are dirty. <laughs> Wash them. Don Geronimo and Mike O'Mara. Now, we covered this earlier on the show at quarter till seven now. That, in all likelihood, we hope it's not this way, but today will be our last show on the network. We think so. Oh, well, I think so, because tomorrow when we come on, I'll just tell the station what we're going to do. We're going to do the regular show we always do, but the, the commercials and stuff... We run nine minutes and 40 seconds of commercials every time that we take a break just because we're on a network. Yeah. That'll change tomorrow. Oh. So just stations should know that, and, and I think Westwood One is making some preparations that they're going to have some tapes ready or offer some other, you know, fine Westwood One programming. Sure. Uh, so in all likelihood, uh, tomorrow we may be gone. Uh, and if not tomorrow, it'll be the next day. If tomorrow goes like we think it will, it doesn't really matter. We won't be here Friday anyway on the network. Right, right. So uh, we said this earlier. We'll say this now. If you're listening around the country, anywhere except on WJFK 106.7, thank you for listening. We appreciate it. We, really do, we really do appreciate it. Yeah, and we'll miss you. Uh, I'm sad to say that I think all of you guys are going to have to stay during the song we've selected to play tonight. So that stations won't cut us off early, mm -hmm. and then we'll we'll come back after the song is over, and then we'll we'll close the door and say very good and say goodbye. That'll be nice. You're gonna play the whole song. The whole song. Sure. <laughs> hey, if we're going out. Yeah, go out with a with a humdinger. You know, Mike and I. Uh, well, I went through the songs, and and I said to Mike, you know, what about this one? Right. This this sums up for, from us to you. <sighs> if you're in a market that we're not going to be hurt in anymore. Very good. Anyway, I predict tears. That's still to come after. Well. A buzz, God, I know when I was a top 40 disc jockey, mm -hmm. back in, uh, was it 77 or 78, I cried every time I played it, mm -hmm. even when it was in hot rotation. Absolutely. But that's just me, okay. and also I'm, an, I'm nutty for Neil Simon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, here's, here's my, so tomorrow, if, if you turn on your radio in one of these cities and we're not there, uh, we covered all of this earlier. Yeah, we did. In the show, so just thanks for listening. Don't and, forget to write. And maybe, you know, maybe sometime... Now, what am I saying? <laughs> He'll never see us again. Thanks for the memories. Hot yeah. dog. Hot dog. Hot dog. It now might be easier to peek over Rosie O'Donnell's fence. She's now complied with a local ordinance that required her to lower the fence around her property near Nyack, New York. She'd heightened the fence with a wide strip of fabric Aww. after she got cited for that and for cutting down trees without a permit. Before the fabric, in at least one case, a fan did climb over the wall and onto Rosie's property. Hey, look! Hi. Rosie. Hi, Rosie. Hi, Rosie. Oprah's neighbors are ganging up on her in Montecito, California. <laughs> Quoting one neighbor, enough is enough. 
The neighbors think Oprah's gone too far, far with the construction on her property. Far. Yeah. She wants a 10-foot-high privacy wall, a new wow. living quarters for 13. That's 13 servants. She also wants a second guarded entrance. Yeah, but remember all you house frows. She's just like you. Yeah. She just clips average gal. She clips lady. coupons and oh. she lives her life every day just like you. Right. Quoting the head of the homeowners association, it's been one construction project after another for months. There are so many trucks, children can't even ride their bikes. As for the privacy wall, quoting one source, everybody here uses hedges and bushes for privacy. Why can't she do that? She's got a nice bush. <laughs> Oprah's neighbors on Maui are complaining as well. Oh, dear, Oprah. Uh, maybe Monday night... Oh, Oprah. Maybe Monday night football. Hello, Oprah. <laughs> Oprah, this is Stedman's. How you doing, Stedman? <laughs> Mike, I don't know if we got time to do this bit. <laughs> you're probably right. I don't think so, but Oprah, if you're there, I got Regis Philbin's here with me. Hi there. How are you, Oprah? <laughs> Come out, Oprah. What are you building a privacy fence for? How's your diarrhea, honey? <laughs> We don't, we don't have that ready now, do we? No, okay. Never mind. In, in sports, maybe Monday Night Football should move to Thursday. Last week's special edition featuring the Redskins and the Jets was the number one TV show of the week. The pregame show came in second. 19 million people watched the game. That's up 11% over last year's average audience for Monday Night It'll Football. It'll be money. Hot dog. Hot dog. Football also led to big numbers for Fox. Its Sunday game with the Falcons and the Cowboys got the highest football ratings ever for that network. And the postgame show, which aired in primetime in this time zone, was the sixth hottest show of the week. Any so what are you waiting for? Keep practicing. I'm hungry. Well, I do know that the Red Sox shut out uh, the Baltimore Orioles today five to nothing. Oh, thank you. How about the Yankees, the Mariners, and the A's? I don't know. Down to 58 tonight, sunny and 78 tomorrow. Right now, it's 72 in D.C., 75 in Baltimore, 68 in Ocean City. And finally, now from the Monkey News Network, Monkeys in the News. In Japan, monkeys are still stealing farmers' crops. Now, though, instead of traffic and weather on the 8th, farmers now get a monkey forecast predicting when and where the monkeys are expected to strike next. <laughs> and, oh. a, and an abused chimp from Chile has found a new home. In the circus, this poor chimp was forced to smoke cigarettes and drink tea. <laughs> you know, there's no funnier old movie that you see every once right. in a while, like on a, on a Saturday morning, if you're going by uh, Arts and Entertainment mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. Right. They're showing some old filler that they yeah. used to run right. in the early days of right. movies. Right. And it's like monkeys seriously smoking cigarettes. Smoking yeah. cigarettes. They love them. I swear to God. You, you know that other thing about the, 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 the kamikaze guys? That, that's funny. Right. But a monkey smoking a cigarette circa 1925 Solid with, like, the funny. bad Charlie Chaplin film? Yeah. That is fall on the floor <laughs> funny. You ever see a chimp ice skate? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Damn funny. That's yeah. true. I've seen a camel on skis. Yeah, fantastic. All of that's great. Well, now this one's in a monkey orphanage in Zambia where he'll apparently live out his days drinking decaf and wearing a nicotine pack. Oh, dear. I'm Buzz Burbank on the Don and Mike Show. Thanks, Buzz. And it would be yeah. at this time that we'd normally do the sorry we're out of right, time. But we have enough time to play a song. And what we said earlier today is true. We're really sorry that... Apparently tomorrow. I'm only laughing because of the song we've selected. And that's why I'm laughing. We really are sorry. From Sacramento to Seattle. From Baltimore to Baton Rouge. Wichita to Portland, Maine. From Buffalo to Hagerstown. And especially to you, Sacramento. All your life you waited for love to come and stay. He never got his due, David Gates. Oh, it's hard to leave. Sure, everybody remembers Brad. What about that solo career, though? But darling, you oh. must trust them just once more. Hey there, Portland. Baby, goodbye. Granton, it's only been a week. Hey, Iowa City. If you wake up and I'm not there, I won't be long away. Listen, Green Bay. Buzz and Vinda's life. Goodbye, girl. bring me back to you. Harrisonburg, Virginia. The Valley's FM talk station, 95.5. I know you've been taking 
so gay. Madison, Wisconsin. Keene, New Hampshire. We're on a Keene? <laughs> Not anymore. I didn't know that. Las Vegas. No. Goodbye, Jacqueline. <laughs> Spokane. I'll leave a Reno. Burlington, two of them, Vermont and Iowa. Oh. Richmond, Norfolk. Little Rock, Lake Charles, Louisiana. Buffalo. Salt Lake City. But most of all, Sacramento. Adieu. I can't stand it. But Sacramento, this is for me to you. You ask me if I love you. No, I'm kidding. I'm Jesus. Kidding. I don't want to touch Sacramento. Oh, my God. I don't want to touch That's them. bad touch right there. I don't want to touch them. All right, that's it. We got to go. See you later. See you tomorrow with a new episode. Bye-bye. On Again. WJFK. Uh, good day to you, sir. 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 <laughs> you, sir. <laughs> yeah, I think we've stumbled upon a new format, regardless <laughs> if we're syndicated or not. Right. Every day we end the show with a song by David Gates. <laughs> yes, uh, I think it'll be perfect. <laughs> Can you name another song by David Gates, not counting bread? Mm. Uh, I think it's called BM. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. But see, now in history, if things go down the way we think they're going to go down with the jerk faces, the last thing heard live on our show on the network would be the Goodbye Girl by David Gates. Yeah, and I, I feel kind of special about it's that. only right. Appropriate. Good day. Good day. Good day. Good day. Good day. <laughs> Good day. It doesn't mean forever. <laughs> okay. Oh, I already did that. Yeah. The, uh, it's the last day. Yeah. Enjoy it one more time. Like corn. BM. Westwood One. Who we meet again? Sammy Davis Jr. saying, uh, be kind, be nice. And I hope the next performer has the pleasure of having as nice an audience as you've been tonight. And let me leave you swinging.